Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this third and last day of the Info Days on Cluster 4, Digital Industry and Space. My name is Ramon San Martin, and I will be moderating this session and program manager at the Strategy Coordination and Research uh, on DigiConnect. So, first, we will start with a few general points on how we will run the session. If we move to the next slide, please. And a couple of, of useful reminders. The first one is a reminder on the brokerage events. These are matchmaking opportunities for all of, all of you interested in, in applying to any of these topics. And tomorrow on Friday, uh, we will have the matchmaking organized by the NCP Idealist, NCP Project Idealist, and it will be focused on the digital topics. You, you can see there further information, a link to where you can find more details. Excuse me, Ramon. Excuse me, it's me, it's Catherine. Uh, could you please hold on a second? Because I see on YouTube that the slides are not shared, and I should, I think, share an application with the PowerPoint application. Can you please hold on a second, please? Certainly. Okay. You let me know, Catherine, no problem. Okay, I'm checking with the YouTube. In a second, normally we should see the presentation now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Okay, it's coming. Okay, I see it on YouTube. It's coming. Okay, I'm yep. sorry for this uh, for this short break. I'm sorry. No okay. problem. Thank you, Catherine. It's important to ensure that we are we okay, are on YouTube. That's perfect. You can continue. Have a nice meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. So I was mentioning about the opportunity, this matchmaking opportunity for for those of you who want to to meet other applicants and, and discuss potential ideas and possibilities of collaboration. So for the digital topics, there is this digital brokerage event organized by the NCP project Idealist. So it will be a very good opportunity. It's taking place this week, tomorrow and Friday. And you can find the link for you can see more details on the screen. So another reminder is uh, about the session on horizontal issues on this war program that took place uh, two days ago, uh, where you can find more information about uh, not so much topic related matters, but horizontal issues such as, for instance, the use of lump sums and so on. So this is uh, this is also very, very important uh, element in, in the application. Um, and finally, uh, in this course, in this session, like in like in the previous ones, you will have the opportunity to ask questions to the presenters. We will use the um, platform Slido. You will need to encode your name, encode your question, and you will also have the opportunity to vote for the questions made by other members of the audience. And since we have a very packed agenda today, if we do not have the opportunity to answer all your questions, we strongly encourage you to use the Q&A section of the funding and tenders portal. Some of you may already be familiar with this functionality. For those of you who do not know, this is a possibility to raise questions about a given topic, to see the questions already made about a given topic and the answers provided uh, on the. If we move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So, uh, on the background where we are, this is uh, the, the whole overview of Horizon Europe. Today, we are focusing on Cluster 4. Cluster 4, the Italian industry and space, is included under Pillar 2, Global Challenges and European Industrial Competitiveness. We will now go one uh, step lower into the granularity, step deeper, and particularly see Destination 6, which is, as you know, one of the six destinations of this of this cluster, the last one that we uh, be presenting these days 
if we move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a, a, um, a reminder of what has been presented these days already in order to, to, to put a little bit of, of background and, and context before going into the granular elements. Cluster four is about ensuring open strategic autonomy, reducing strategic dependencies on key technologies. It's also about launching and developing regenerative, regenerative technologies for the twin and twin green and digital transitions. And it's also about developing human-centric technologies, an element which will gain a lot of uh, focus today and will, which will be the key element of today's um, presentations. If we move to the next slide, please. Yes, thank you. So today we're going, yes, thank you. Today we're going to focus, uh, no, the next one. This one, yes, thank you. So today we are going to talk about destination six. You are going to to see presentation on the different uh, on the two calls, and and the different topics under these calls that uh, that are part of this world program uh, 2023 uh, of the of the year uh, 2023 of the biannual world program 2023-2024. But we'll focus on the on the calls for next year. And uh, in this destination, the idea is to encourage human-centric and ethical approaches. About, it's about a two-way engagement in the development of technologies, empowering both end users and workers. And it's also about supporting social innovation and new European Bauhaus. So this human-centric approach is embedded also in the other destinations, but it gains a capital uh, presence in this, in this destination. If we move to the next slide, please. Yes. So there are two calls that will and that are part of this destination in the in the next year. It's called uh, 2023 Human CO1 and 2023 Human CO1 Connect. This has no no impact uh, for for the applicants. This is purely internal distribution. It has no effect on the topics or on anything else. The timeline is the same. It just relates to the entity that will be in charge of the of the handling of the evaluation and the and the and the posterior execution of of the of the projects. The timeline is the 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 opening is, is the eighth December, so it's already open since few days, and the deadline is the 29th of March of next year. If we move to the next slide, please. Yeah, so I think we we jumped one maybe yeah. okay so this is um this is a very wide destination a very pretty packed destination and uh, and it uh, it is a structure around different headings different objectives uh, we can see in the screens leadership in ai based on trust european standards for industrial competitiveness if we move to the next slide an internet of trust, extended reality topics as well, digital humanism and human compatible technologies. So you will see that there are many different areas, intervention areas or objectives being tackled throughout the session today. And if we go to the next slide, I think, yes, we still have three more that will be covered, I believe, in the afternoon. The systemic approaches for accelerating uptake of technology and innovation, international cooperation and research and innovation for industry 5.0. So it's um, it's a long list of, of topics that will be covered today. Various topics, uh, different types of actions, research and innovation actions, CSAs. Uh, also, some of these topics will be contributing to, to co-program partnerships. I believe if we go back to the first slide of this section, can we go back, please? And one more. Yes, thank you. Uh, particularly in the first section of leadership in AI based on trust, this will be the first session. Some of these topics contribute to the AI data and robotics partnership. The next speaker will probably make reference to, to this element as well. So now going forward again, thank you. And again, yes, 
So I think now we are ready to start with the first section of the day, the objective, the heading leadership in AI based on trust. We will have several speakers. The first two topics will be presented by Evangelia Marquedou, Head of Sector at the Unit Artificial Intelligence Technology Development and Impact at DigiConnect. Evangelia, happy to pass you the floor and welcome. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning, everybody. And yes, uh, as, as you rightly said, I will present the first uh, two now in a row. And uh, as you will see, they, they are already marked on the first slide as a partnership topic. That does not mean, uh, in, in general, it means that the strategic research, innovation and development agenda of the AI data and robotics partnership fed into those topic descriptions. But it means also that everybody can, of course, apply to those uh, topics. So the first one, can we move the next slide, please? So the first topic that I'm going to present to you it's called uh, Efficient, Trustworthy AI, Making the Best of Data. And this is a collaboration between Destinations 3 and 6, so the data topics and, and AI. We collaborate also together. We together wrote, uh, uh, contributed to this topic. What are we looking for? We look for optimized AI solutions, so optimizing the model design and the data usage to maximize also the accuracy and robustness of AI systems and to ensure, of course, in general, that the pipeline, that there is the pipeline that guarantees of high quality, representative, unbiased and compliant training data for AI development in all relevant sectors. And we also want to support the data preparation and AI training processes that lead to efficient and more trustworthy AI. Uh, as you will see also in the topic description, we have two focus areas, so we will also ask proposers to clearly identify what will be the main focus area. So on the one side, it will be the automated and AI based AI. Um, the AI based mining, harvesting, selection, cleaning and annotation of, of data for AI. And on the other side, it will be the about less data intensive uh, and less energy consuming AI models. So we will ask, but uh, the topic description makes it very clear that proposers need to clearly identify which of the two research areas will be the main focus areas. That does not mean that proposers can target also both, but they please have to identify their main focus area. The indicative budget is 35 million. And we expect uh, to fund uh, projects between uh, seven and eight million per project. And uh, I think the type of action is wrong there. It's a research and innovation action. And the TRL, we expect to start between two and three and reach ideally four to five in the end. What we do not want to see in this kind of uh, in proposals is really limited ambition and only incremental progress over the scientific state of the art. And we also, uh, but that is also explicitly mentioned in the topic description. No lack of uh, description availability of data. So it is clearly described that uh, proposers have to also uh, clearly identify the data that they are going to use for the project. And these are the aspects that need to be taken into account when um, submitting proposals for this topic. It's a relatively new topic, but nevertheless, we had in the 0101 to uh, topic in uh, the 21 call. Uh, uh, five research areas. One of them was on green AI, and we selected one proposal there, one project which started now in November. So there you can also see on the website and also on the AI data and robotics uh, uh, website more information about the projects that were selected. I would rather say that it, it's good in propo uh, proposals to kind of make reference to any existing initiatives, but also existing projects when they're going to submit a proposal here. What other types of stakeholders? that we address well academ academy and research organizations because it's a research and innovation action but also industry including smes and startups that are really targeting this type of aspects we also want to see multidisciplinary approach here and uh, ssh being uh, addressed as well and the key group of course that will drive this is the ai data and robotics partnership we would also like to give you a heads up that we will also organize a more dedicated hands-on also info day with a partnership uh, in the beginning of february so for interested proposers they should also really look regularly at the website of the partnership and see when this kind of info day is going to be taking place i think that would be it from my side uh, ramon and maybe we are opening for questions yes thank you very much evangelia for this uh, very quick 
presentation on comprehensive keeping the time it, it helps thank you so uh, this is now the opportunity for indeed for the audience to 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 pass their questions um, you are the reminder you need to go to slido and enter the event code you know this probably if you've been following the previous days so you can go there enter your question and also support questions already made by other by other viewers uh, if you think they cover your point or or you would like to to see them first yes here we go with the first question uh, which are the relevant sectors as refers in this uh, as referring the expected outcomes I think we say all relevant sectors, so I mean, we didn't want to be very descriptive, but there are a, a lot of sectors. I think I would say with the current energy crisis, all sectors will address, will have to address the energy efficiency. So we are not very descriptive in this respect. Okay, thank you, Angelia. Let us see if we have any further questions on this topic. We will give a few more seconds. In the meantime, I don't know if you want to make any remarks about particular points, Evangelia, otherwise we... Yes, I mean, the truth is that uh, the, the whole cluster is uh, divided into destinations, but there are clearly links also with other uh, uh, topics in other destinations. I forgot to mention it earlier, so it's it's really with Destination 3, we worked together now, and the topic is situated in Destination 6 because of the trustworthiness and the human-centric aspect. But we also want to say that there are also clearly links with the cognitive cloud continuum and uh, topics that are really also uh, enlisted in, in destination three and we really want to make sure that proposers really make the links with everything else that is out there we don't want to kind of have siloed approaches so really take into account everything that exists linked to existing initiatives or ongoing initiatives and uh, that i would be i would say is a, a good tip for proposers indeed Thank you, Evangelia. Uh, I see that there are no further questions, so maybe we can move already to the next um, to the next topic. Yes, we went back a little bit, but we will resume. No, here it is. Yes. There we are. Thanks a lot. So the next topic is an innovation action. I, I hope I got it right here on, on, on the slide. It's uh, we're really looking for now large scale pilots uh, on trustworthy AI data and robotics that address key societal challenges. Because, I mean, we had in the 21 call primarily under destination six research and innovation actions. This is the first innovation action now uh, uh, targeting uh, AI data and robotics technologies. And what we really want to see is really strengthening the EU's ecosystem on, on uh, AI data and robotics excellence and innovation in world class foundational and application inspired, but also application oriented research. We want to see technology progress in AI that addresses. Um, uh, uh, the major challenges that exist from the, the, the slow uptake sometimes or that hamper the deployment of AI data and robotics technologies in, in the market. We want also to see a wider uptake of AI data and robotics technologies by industry and end users too, towards, of course, also the digital decade targets that we have set for 2030. And of course, we want to see more robust and trustworthy technologies being available uh, uh, on the market. So. Of course, here this is an innovation action, so we do not want to see an academic focus. So really saying large scale pilots means that you really proposers have to have in the consortia also kind of key uh, industry partners inside that really are representative from, for the sector that will be targeted in the proposal. And I'll have to say we do not give, again, examples of sectors. This is really open, but I mean, there are sometimes sectors that have a higher societal impact like healthcare than others but uh, we would like really proposals to make the case why they target a, a particular sector and then of course they have to really make sure that they bring also a critical mass of the industry that is uh, uh, um, uh, active in that sector here in europe so what is equally also important for this topic is really the 
the the the end user involvement because it's a human centric approach now we leave it to the proposers how they want to include end users in the project but really it has to be become very apparent that the end user involvement and therefore also the the input of end users in the whole design and process is included and i think uh, we do not want really to see an, an a focus on what we would call low impact sectors. So really the case has to be made in the proposal, why a specific sector is being targeted and what the impact will be. So this is also, as I said, a relatively new kind of topic, but we had in the past under the H2020 and the light uh, program, uh, also large scale pilots. They were kind of a combination was IoT, uh, AI and uh, big data or HPC AI and, and a big data. These are again a kind of a new set of large scale pilots. And as you can see, the EU contribution per project is 8 million. So we expect to fund three projects under this uh, uh, topic and the TRL will start between three to five and hopefully we will achieve by the end of this uh, five to seven. As I said also in the previous call, we will have a dedicated uh, uh, info day together that will, organ will be organized by the AI Data and Robotics Partnership at the beginning of February. And I think they will also have uh, some kind of pitch event. I don't have the full details, but if you stay tuned and show also, I mean, uh, have a look also at the AI Data and Robotics Partnership and become even a member if you're an interested kind of stakeholder. But I mean, this is the place to kind of stay tuned on all of the kind of uh, updates. Bear in mind that InfoDay will really address all the AI, data and robotics partnership tech topics that will be open now in 23. So including also in uh, topics from other destinations. I think here I stop as well, Ramon, and open up for, for questions. Thank you very much, Evangelia. Again, Opportunity for questions. Go to Slido, enter the event code info day, and we will see them on the screen. And Evangelia will have the opportunity to to answer any questions. Okay, since we have a question, will energy be one of the preferred application areas? Okay, so energy is one of the can be one of the sectors that is being targeted but as we said uh, you will need or proposals will need to bring a really a critical mass of industry players there and really has to show how the end users are a kind of uh, addressed and here of course end user involvement it depends who are going to be the end users of the final product or the application or the kind of services that will be provided so the, depending on the definition those type of end users will also need to be involved in the project um, is the AI data and Robotics Partnership, this, the same as the AI Data and Robotics Association. So the European Partnership on AI Data and Robotics has the private side and the, 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 the uh, public side. The public side is the Commission and the private side is the AI Data and Robotics Association. Yes, indeed. Okay. Seems there are no more questions. Thank you very much for now and uh, see you soon, Evangelia, because okay, I think you will be also presenting another topic very soon. Uh, and uh, so I think we can move to the next um, the next topic. In uh, the next presentation, it will be conducted by Pavel Dobos, Program Manager at the Unit on Accessibility, Multilingualism and Safer Internet of DigiConnect at the European Commission. Pavel, when you are ready, is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Pavel Dobos, and I represent unit dealing with multilingualism and language technologies in European Commission, Director General for Communications Networks, Content and Technology. 
Uh, I will present you the Horizon Europe call for proposals in the area of natural language understanding and interaction in advanced language technologies under AI data and robotics partnership. As artificial intelligence becomes increasingly more performant, there is growing potential for humans to directly use and benefit from smarter systems that rely on grasping real meaning from natural languages, recognizing gestures and activities, understanding intention, creating and maintaining shared mental models, and designing multi-step interactions. Therefore, the main challenge to be addressed under this topic is effective AI-based human-machine interaction and collaboration. The total indicative budget for this topic is 20 million euros, and we estimate that an EU contribution of between 6 and 8 million euros would allow the topic outcomes to be addressed appropriately. Nonetheless, this does not preclude submission and selection of proposal requesting different amounts. The proposals should be research and innovation actions, and activities to be carried out are expected to start at tier 2 and achieve tier 5 by the end of the project. Uh, projects under this topic are expected to contribute to the following outcomes. So first, development of natural language understanding and interaction in advanced language technologies based on context-aware language models able to further integrate long-term no general knowledge and derive meaning in order to develop automated reasoning and enhanced interaction skills. The outcomes should also include effective multilingual and bias controlled language models capable of learning from smaller language corpora, efficient in computing and respectful of European values. The expected outcomes include also AI systems and solutions based on novel multilingual pre-trained language models that have assimilated cross-language and cross-cultural knowledge through textual and speech input. And finally, what is very much expected is higher uptake of innovative language technology solutions by European companies providing extensive language coverage of AI-enabled applications and services in Europe. In terms of scope, the envisaged AI solutions should address one or both of the following main areas. First, they should improve context-aware human-machine interaction to increase understanding and exploitation of interaction context and content in multimodal settings, thus increasing responsiveness of interactive AI solutions, such as smart assistants, conversational and dialogue systems, content generation models, etc. Second, the envisaged AI solutions should support and enhance seamless human-to-human -human communication across languages, for example, by means of automatic translation or interpretation, including automatic subtitling, in real time with a greater understanding of the communication context and the meaning involved in it. What's more, multidisciplinary research activities to be carried out under this topic should address at least one of the following scope areas. First, developing novel methods and techniques for producing context-aware models which incorporate factual-based structured and unstructured knowledge in broader situational and temporal information and continual learning to achieve natural behavior and reasoning in all intended settings. Second, research activities should address improving large pre-trained multilingual language models to cover a large set of languages with a high level of natural language understanding and the ability to efficiently add more languages, including low resource ones, via transfer or language independent learning methods. In the in third scope area, we are looking for projects improving language independent and bias controlling algorithms and methods for language model training and usage efficiency in terms of data, time and energy consumption, while retaining performance, accuracy and general reusability. And finally, under fourth scope area, the proposals should develop language representations encompassing an effective combination of multilingual, symbolic, and sub-symbolic knowledge and allowing systems to perform cross-cultural reasoning in various contextual tasks. When it comes to general topic conditions, proposals should involve appropriate expertise, including data science, computer science, computational linguistics, machine learning, natural language processing, biases language models, etc. 
they should also build on existing standards and contribute to standardization, as well as result in findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable research data, including metadata schemes and ontologies. Proposals should uh, also include embedded mechanisms to assess and demonstrate progress, qualitative and quantitative KPIs, benchmarking and progress monitoring, as well as illustrative application use cases demonstrating concrete potential added value. They should also foresee sharing communicable results with the European R&D community through the AI on demand platform, common European data, data spaces, especially language data space and by other means. Proposals are also expected to participate in the relevant innovation challenges. Yes, and this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention and any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Pavel. Uh, maybe we can try to show again the slide with the, with the details, details for a Slido. Uh, in the meantime, I, we've noticed that there is some delay between the time that some of you are sending the questions and the time that we we get them processed here and so on on the screen. So we will give a few more times for question in order to to be able to to give all of you time to to send your questions and and that they reach us uh, in time. So we don't rush. Plus we are going ahead on the schedule. So now soon we will be seeing any questions on on this topic. So Pavel can have the opportunity to clarify. Yes, I think we are getting there. First question, Pavel, what type of involvement for companies in this action? Are pilot expected? Yes, so uh, maybe for this question, I would like to ask Philippe Gelin also to uh, contribute. Thank you, Pavel. Pavel. Um, Actually, the type of application is really impacting all the different um, economic care sectors. So in terms of pilot, we are not expecting to, to target very specific applications. So basically all pilots are uh, type are expected because obviously the, the language models are impacting everybody. In short, that would be the, uh, the things. Uh, I'm also taking the second question. Developing language representation includes sign language or excluded, technically speaking? Uh, technically speaking, there is an obvious merge between sign language and the other one. That's the reason why we are mentioning also multimodal uh, language models. So they are uh, incorporated, technically speaking. Can you say something about the state need, the state it need for SSH involvement? Well, um, it's it's a topic that uh, implied all the necessary uh, expertise. So social science and humanities is also definitely welcome in this section. Uh, if I remember well, we were mentioning um, linguist and uh, com computational linguist as well as part uh, of the call. Thank you very much, Philippe, Pavel. Again, let us wait a few more seconds for any questions that may be reaching us. And again, if you want to make use of this uh, of this time, Pablo Philippe to, to make particular remarks or add in some suggestions, advice or pieces of information which you may find useful for the applicants, please don't hesitate. So I, I just was just checking on the appropriate and expertise we are mentioning, including data science, computing science, computational linguist, machine learning, natural language processing, bias in language model, and so forth. Okay. 
So I got confused. So we go back uh, again to um, to an AI topic presented uh, by Evangelia. This time is CSA. Evangelia, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Ramon. So that's the last topic uh, that I'm presenting today. And it's uh, a CSA addressing grant challenges in AI and we, it's an open innovation. So open innovation challenges. What we are looking for is really to demonstrate and reinforce the research excellence that we have in AI by driving also substantial scientific progress in the uh, in the following major scientific and technological areas. And I'll explain a little bit later because it links to the topics that we described uh, just now. Uh, me and Pavel, so optimization, explainability, robustness, natural language, understanding and interaction and collaborative intelligence. We want to see also uh, the development of prestigious AI open innovation challenges that will mobilize, that will manage to really mobilize a wide participation of top scientists from academia, but not only, so also including industry and startups, as well as young teams and rising stars from all over the European Union and of course the associated countries. And we really want to see the substantial increase of interest from industry in AI, including also SMEs and startups, in particular key social economic sectors for Europe and therefore contributing to in, uh, increasingly contributing to the uptake of research results by industry. Having said that, this is a topic which uh, links to uh, topics that we call for in 23 and 24. In 23, there is a connection, and uh, Pavel mentioned it earlier. I forgot to mention it in the 01 topic, but it's clearly described in the topic description. So the, the topics, uh, the 01 topic and the 03 topic uh, on natural language interaction will collaborate with the CSA and will uh, uh, participate. Also, the research teams will also participate in the dedicated uh, challenges that will take place. Um, basically, what we really want to see is really a, a, a scientific and substantial progress in the areas. And those innovation challenges should really bring also all the other research teams around, not only the ones that will be uh, tackling challenges in the, uh, the two topics that were just presented, but also across uh, Europe on those kind of uh, research challenges. Uh, while it is a tag to CSA, there is a, a substantial amount, as you will have seen, also for financial support to third parties, which will not be uh, in, as a type of a grant, but really as a type of a prize. And we really want also to see increasingly an amount of industry being involved that also can chip into the kind of prices. But also, we really want to see this kind of collaborative competition among uh, research teams in Europe to drive really the areas forward. That is basically a kind of a new also topic per se, and it was really also discussed and brought together also with the collaboration of the AI Data and Robotics Partnership. Uh, in that respect, this kind of CSA will also then collaborate with two topics that will be called for in the 24 uh, call. So explainable and robust AI and collaborative intelligence. But as I said, in this in this uh, call, it will collaborate already with the efficient trustworthy AI topic and the natural language understanding and interaction topic. Therefore, while it is a CSA, the TRL, we expect of those challenges to start at two, three, and then uh, at the end of the challenges to have achieved four to five. That I would say is in a nutshell. What is really important here that we get in a, in the consortium um, entities that have an experience and know how this kind of inno open innovation challenges work, and that can really make sure that uh, the visibility is there to really attract all the most uh, pro uh, promising research teams across Europe and, as I said, rising stars. So the, the, the definition will also be kind of uh, developed during the CSA, but we also would allow anybody, you know, who is a kind of uh, working and researching in the respective field to participate in those challenges. And uh, really, I mean, the consortium needs to have this expertise, what works, what doesn't work, knowing about lessons learned from previous kind of experience, how these uh, uh, challenges are run out, carried out, and how I also to ensure that a critical mass is uh, being kind of uh, attracted to participate in those challenges. I think that would be it from my side, Ramon, and I would expect some questions. Let's see now. I mean, we will, of course, wait for them to come in. Yes. Thank you, Evangelia. Indeed, we will give We'll give some more time. So all participants who want to make questions, they have the chance. The details don't change. 
go to Slido, enter the event code. If for day. Here they come. First question from Lisa Binkel. Is this call also flagged for SSH? Can you say a bit about expected contributions from SSH in this topic and maybe also in topic 01 and 02? So also connecting with your previous presentations, Evangelia. Yes, so I think uh, as, as my, my colleague before, uh, Philippe, explained, I mean, there are specific I mean, descriptions and uh, it's explained what kind of expertise we need. I would say social science and humanities is an integral part of Destination 6, and especially when we talk about uh, leadership and trust. So uh, uh, we do not expect uh, something else here. So we expect in those topics really to bring the critical mass of expertise that is needed to carry it out of those. And when it comes to AI, I think SSH is an integral part and a kind of really interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approach. So in that respect, I would really also follow with uh, the work program and the topic description. What are the requirements? Because there are several bullet points there. I do not know them by heart, but I would say, yes, SSH is an integral part for those type of topics. I think there is an indication. You'll ha I'll have to open up the work program and see what has to go into uh, FSTP. So what the text states is that if, for example, uh, the research, uh, the teams that will be, or the consortia that will be selected under the topic 01 and 03, if they participate as well, they are not eligible, of course, to the price because that would con be considered a double funding. They are already being funded under their respective project, but they, are, uh, they should collaborate and they should also participate in those innovation challenges, but they will, of course, be not be subject to a price if it's a monetary price. If the price, for example, is uh, publication in a in a, in a top-notch journal of course they are also allowed to this type of price but they will not be allowed to a monetary price how you will know who will be involved well the CSA will have to participate with the selected project so uh, automatically they will know I mean who they are is a person for the calls there is an, is a partnership membership no it, I think um, maybe for the the participants to, to join later those topics have been kind of uh, uh, the, the, the AI Data and Robotics Partnership contributed through the SRIDA for these topics. While they are tagged as a PPP topic, this is really to show that the PPP gave input to those topics. But everybody is uh, allowed to participate to those and submit proposals for those topics. If you want to become a member, you get, of course, more access to other type of information or to, to workshops, but uh, you, are, you do not have to be a member to apply for those topics. I don't know if there was a new question or not. Yeah, indeed, I have the impression that there was a, a last question. Okay, maybe we'll but wait a little we bit. Are, yes, indeed. We are working to get it back on the screen. I believe here it comes. Indeed. There it is. I'm not sure what the question is now. Ah, okay, so I read it aloud. Uh, only for the first topic, only one ballot is focused on energy efficiency while the other is on the automated AI, an annotation of data that is not always energy efficient. Seems rather a remark than a question. Well, I mean, the overall goal is the efficiency. So that kind of annotation of data should also make sure that it kind of uh, will uh, use less energy when it comes to computing uh, capacities and uh, the, the use of computing capacity. So the overall goal is the energy efficiency. So within that, this kind of annotation of data should also kind of uh, show that it kind of contributes to energy efficiency. So we don't want to do the standard kind of things. We want to do everything under the heading of uh, energy efficiency, and they're looking into new methods. 
having said that, the quality of data should not kind of uh, not to the detriment of the quality of the data, of course. No, they are not automatically eligible for funding. They will not receive funding per se, but the, those countries can participate in in those kind of uh, projects because there's also a collaboration with those countries when it comes to AI and, for example, in this case for uh, uh, energy efficiency. So uh, participants from Canada and India can participate in the consortium. Okay, so those were quite the quite a few questions. I hope we we managed to to get them get them more processed. Thank you very much for your thank questions you. and thank you to Evangelia for uh, for clarifying. Uh, I, Evangelia, I don't know if you wanted to share um, some links uh, or or maybe this can be or or point to uh, to um any website where where applicants can well i was thinking maybe because i found a typo in the first topic that i explained which is not an innovation action but it was tagged as an innovation action i could add a second slide with a link to the partnership and the project that is already funded under the first call because there was a link if that would be useful so the the participants can then receive the kind of uh, information also because mm -hmm. if, otherwise now they would have to probably take a print screen yeah yeah uh, indeed indeed i i do not know whether the slides uh, will be shared uh, okay. are at this stage that's why i would suggest that while we move now to to the presentation of, of the next topic by by peter maybe uh, uh, you can work uh, with the colleagues um, on the background behind the scenes and uh, work on this slide and later on i pass you the floor and, and we saw it uh, on the screen would that work yes or otherwise i show now the the kind of uh, the, ah, the slides wonderful yes if it's ready then uh, then let us let us proceed like this so i think you will need to to share your screen i believe or the application I don't know if you can Great. see the slide. So this is the link to the the AI Data and Robotics Association, where uh, then the partner uh, the the dedicated info day will take place. And also for interested uh, stakeholders that might think of joining the partnership, this is where they will find also additional information about why it would be interesting to become a member or not. But as I said. Uh, applying to those kind of uh, proposals, one does not have to be a member. I think these are additional links. Now, of course, it, it's difficult because one has to click on those, and that's why I thought maybe we can add them somewhere, or maybe we can put them in in um, in the chat. But we had a launch event where we kind of published and presented all the new projects that we had. Among one of them was also, of course, this one project on green AI. It's called Sustain ML. So maybe these type of links would be also interested. And as I said, I mean, the links here also to the Digital Europe program, because when we talk about data, there are, of course, also the data spaces and other activities under the Digital Europe program, to which we link also in the topic description. Indeed, I believe even if 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 uh, we are not sure whether the slides will be shared as such, uh, normally by Googling uh, this um, the, the the wording that we see on the screen, I believe that it should be pretty straightforward to to get to the to the desired destination and this pieces of information. So we will leave this on the screen for a few more seconds, and then we will we will um, move on to the next presentation. I understand those were the two slides, no? Uh, yes. That you were referring to? Okay, so then I think we can resume. Thank you very much, Evangelia, again. Uh, and now I'm happy to uh, to welcome our next uh, presenter, Peter Fries. He's program officer at the Media Convergence and Social Media Unit at DigiConnect. Mm -hmm. Peter. Hello, good morning, dear audience, uh, dear colleagues. Um, Ramon, can you um, confirm that you heard me very well? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you well. Okay, thank you very much. 
Yeah, good morning. So I'm very happy to present you um, another topic, which is called to AI from disinformation to trust. It's uh, innovation action, and I will talk in a second about the details. I think what is important is that what has been presented uh, before um, around the Commission's AI activities. So, of course, this topic links in a broader scope also to the other ongoing activities, speed, um, coordination, action, horizontal activities, uh, shared infrastructures. So, if you want, it's uh, also a more dedicated use case of um, AI in a specific, I think, timely content or context, but of course it links to the Commission's overall and very engaged AI activities. You might Perhaps remember that in the past work program, we had a research innovation actually called from, uh, uh, well, it was called AI Against Disinformation, and we have three new projects which start, just started. Um, I will put the names in the chat because their web presence is uh, bound to start, but not yet there. So then you can also, of course, have a look and refer to them. These um, new projects now, which have started, um, address um, disinformation and in a broader context, um, target or aim to increase trust in um, media and social media communication and interaction. And uh, I think I don't need to remember what happened all this year in terms of false information, disinformation, and in parallel, of course, to real crisis, which are quite severe. And uh, I think we don't know what's going to come, and, and, uh, but certainly can also become better. Nevertheless, this is an important topic, and uh, what you all think is to see uh, two sides, which one is uh, the media and social media professionals, and the other side is the citizens. So what we'll do in the new project is that uh, we're going to finance uh, two projects in a call. One is for the media professionals, and one is for um, the citizens, and um, there will be one project per topic, subtopic financed, and you should indicate in your proposal which topic you are going to address. Can I get the next slide, please? Thank you very much. So, and this new topic is called Through AI from Disinformation to Trust. Um, it's an innovation action uh, because we think that uh, new, now new projects have a stronger research component, um, elaborating what how AI tools approach a method can be used, and we thought the upcoming uh, now new projects should then go more into um, te pilot testing and come co uh, closer to um, to take up or to, to implementation. That's why this um, uh, this new call is uh, an innovation action, and it has, um, as I said, um, two subtopics: one addressing uh, media professionals, the other one addressing citizens. Um, what we do and it already now is that uh, later on we will ask the project to collaborate. So um, I think in your proposal it's not forbidden to uh, anticipate how, if you, for example, you support media professionals, how you could also maybe reach out to some sort of, of citizens or how this project could then benefit from um, being connected to citizens participating in, in, in pilots and, and testing. Um, but of course, it's different. Uh, it's different sides how um, innovative AI solutions can be used. If you think about innovative AI solutions, um, what could it be? Um, simple ones are maybe a machine learning algorithm. It can be a false news detection. It can be a large database which um, allows actually to filter out uh, news. It can maybe trace back. It can um, uh, derive patterns. And uh, I think you also have seen that uh, more and more we are also going into um, virtual or fake news, even maybe false uh, audio documents. So I think also that um, this new project uh, in using AI um, goes beyond uh, textual information only. So we certainly want that the projects address um, um, virtual or fakes and all kinds of other things. Um, I'm coming back to this in a second. So we have a budget of 10 million and we expect a contribution of about 5 million euro per project. And you said you indicate in your project which kind of expected outcome you address. And we will finance one of each project. Overall, the relevant documents for this topic are the European Democratic Action Plan, which really focuses on um, uh, a democratic media environment in Europe, which I think uh, during this year uh, became more and more 
prominent and it's also the European media environment is a, re a worldwide reference so we want to support this reference and um, foster it. There is the media and audiovisual action plan which brings uh, forward or should help the um, European media and social media ecosystem. It means um, support citizens but also support media professionals in particular to, um, to, to be ready for the next decade. And uh, this year there was a, a new code of practice on disinformation. This is a self-regulatory code where um, many of the major social media platforms and networks uh, subscribe to take action against uh, false news and disinformation. So um, those activities should not be forgotten. Also not to also to say that uh, the European uh, Disinformation Media Observatory um, is now taking up shape and uh, part of you might already know that uh, they do a really good job, uh, job on fact checking in various countries in Europe. And of course, in particular, if you think about outreaching the citizens, they're a, um, a preferred or interesting uh, group to, to be uh, considered in a, in a proposal. Can I please get the next slide? Yeah, this is a busy slide, but uh, I preferred instead of um, some of Summarizing what is in context to actually take out the context for um, directly having the right wording. These new projects are also coming in uh, uh, at a moment, or it is called for a new project, where we, I think, going a bit more to the next round of um, hybrid existence, online, offline existence, um, virtual worlds. Um, I think you're all familiar, this has been triggered by the announcement of Facebook in 2021 about a metaverse or the metaverse but part is that we are going more into more into uh, virtual realities which are inspired by gaming contexts which have often practical applications in, in certain professions like for the architecture health um, where of course in any case these, these environments are computer generated so there are certainly prone or there is a, um, a high risk that there might be also there might be fake or there might be uh, yeah, misle misleading and not enough trust. So we expect those projects, I would say, to anticipate these upcoming new tendencies, not to work explicitly on the metaverse or on the digital universes, but to uh, take into account more and more um, uh, a human hybrid. Um, in the second uh, paragraph, as I said before, um, you have seen maybe the latest uh, advancement uh, of uh, um, text-to-image um, software publicly available, such as DALI from OpenAI, Disco Diffusion, uh, Stable Diffusion, Midjourney, which uh, provides stunning results for computer-generated images which have never been existed before. I think that's only an example, and the least, last one is, of course, the chat uh, GPT bot from OpenAI, uh, where also has it's very nice in results for, for, for computer-generated text and, and news. As cool as this is, of course, it's open. It's a new avenue for um, to be misused uh, in uh, political propaganda and advertising and, and false information um, about energy prices and you name it. So we think that these recent um, achievements uh, should be taken into account. So clearly, um, more than in the past call, we go beyond um, text and, and news only. So I really want you to address this um, new upcoming fantastic possibilities, but certainly also new fields where people might um, produce harmful content and, and uh, decrease trust. Um, like it was said a bit before, we see these projects have a technology, but also like my colleague explained, a society as its Asian component, which means we are very much interested that the project teams are um, interdisciplinary, coming from media professionals, technology providers, citizens organizations, um, uh, media organizations, social media influencers, maybe people from gaming industry, uh, people from infotainment. Um, because we feel that these are also the, the fields where um, disinformation is often uh, produced and then also then uh, distributed, right? I think we are a lot in infotainment, um, there might be false narratives in, in, in gaming applications, etc., etc. So, coming back, if you think about through AI from disinformation to trust, um, and that's why I kept this slide a bit busy, 
we want you uh, to consider all those points if you work on proposals how we can use um, all kinds of um, i think machine learning big ai tools in uh, increasing uh, complex uh, hybrid environment to generate trust and uh, to promote european values of democracy and of uh, fair existence and I think that concludes my presentation. Um, I'm open for questions. You can always switch me. I will put the names of the now new project into the chat. I'm happy for to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. So uh, this is the opportunity for asking question on this last last topic on the on the AI session. Um, the event the details don't change you need to go to slido you need to enter the event code info day we will give a few minutes so there is opportunity for all the questions to reach us and and for peter to to address them We do not have questions so far. Um, maybe what we could do, you were mentioning, Peter, that you could share some um, some extra details. I do not think we can do this through the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. OK, I get confirmation that there are no questions. Uh, so maybe the best way would be to, I don't know if you have this on a slide or uh, on a Word document, and then share your screen so we can. Um... So I was just typing the name of the three new projects in the chat, right? Okay. Um, we can read it aloud otherwise. Yeah, it's uh, AI for Trust, Vera dot AI and Titan. So we have two projects now. There was um, additional uh, budget uh, available. We have two projects, um, AI um, against information for media professionals, and we have one on uh, the, the um, for citizens. So we were lucky to finance one project more. Mm, what I can say is um, we will also soon have a roadmap from a study we commissioned about um, digital media and human well-being. And there was a final conference uh, last week uh, on this project. Um, one interesting aspect are certainly um, all kinds of recommender systems. So, um, of course, people trust recommendations of fellows of peers of uh, sources they believe in mm, i th think linking and 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 referring to a network or to a trust the authority is certainly very inter interesting in the context of um of this uh, uh of this topic um human well-being is a big point i think it reaches from audience who feels more safer online to people who are addicted uh, on the opposite to gaming or spend all their life in social media. I think projects around social media like this current topic should always have in mind that if you go to a uh, more virtual existence, this certainly we are um, also in uh, the happiness is maybe in a mixed online uh, and, and offline or real world um, ex existence. So I think the context for those projects around social media is certainly it's a very important means for um, for um, society, not only for communication, but also for accessing services, um, for making transactions or whatever, uh, getting to know new people. But it's always the way is it built or uh, the tools we use, are they built that we, um, we can also disconnect or enjoy that we uh, make a break? Or what is often happening today, the tools are built that they actually um, drag us to stay nonstop online. Same goes for some for some games. So basically, we, we start to forget a bit about the, the real world. Um, so that's, I think, also the context of this project is to, to say that um, the human digital well-being is precisely maybe in a mixed uh, um, hybrid existence and not only in being online all the time and having systems um, 
non-stop uh, dragging us to the screen or getting us into immersive experiences. Okay. I think that's okay. Okay. Thank you very um, much, Peter, for this extra piece of uh, of information, which I'm sure it's very helpful for for the for those applicants interested to to better understand what we're looking for here. Mm -hmm. So I think you are crystal clear. No questions received. <laughs> so we we will now move. Thank you very much, Peter, again, mm -hmm. and uh, we will now move to the next. Um, we close this first objective and we move to the second uh, to be covered in today's uh, presentations on destination six. This one will be on European standard for industrial competitiveness. And we will have uh, three speakers, if I am correct. The first one will be Carlos Lopez Rodriguez, policy officer at the unit digital innovation at blockchain at DigiConnect, who will present the first two topics. Carlos, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you, Ramon, for giving me the floor. And <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Carlos Lopez. I'm a policy officer, as Ramon said, in ICT standardization at DigiConnect. And today <clears throat> I'm going to present uh, two coordinated and support actions on international standardization, which uh, both of them aim to support the, the recently adopted the European standardization strategy uh, in, in February 2022. And uh, one of the pillars of this strategy is the international aspect uh, aiming to support the EU's uh, leading position as a global standard setter by promoting uh, EU values and interest and also our own uh, technological developments. So uh, if we go to the next slide, please, um, I will present the first uh, action. So this action um, is meant to, to provide uh, support regarding digital standardization to broader international initiatives, for example, digital partnerships with uh, Japan and South Korea or uh, the Trade and Technology Council with the US, and also strengthen our ties in digital standardization with uh, other like-minded countries. So more specifically, the, the outcomes that we expect from this uh, from the execution of this uh, project uh, are, are three. First, uh, engage with uh, relevant uh, entities from like-minded countries working on ICT standardization. And these relevant entities could be uh, local standard development organization, but also national administrations. And the idea is to develop uh, a common vision on digital standardization of uh, key technological uh, topics. For instance, uh, semiconductors, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, quantum, uh, high performance computing, etc. Because, uh, as you may be aware, standardization of these topics uh, is usually done at an international level. Uh, so the second uh, point is uh, to have a, a coordinated mechanism to basically implement this uh, common vision into aligned position and uh, common agendas in uh, international standardization organizations. For example, we target here uh, formal uh, standard development organizations like uh, ISO, IEC, JTC1 or ITUT, but also other foreign consortia like uh, 3GPP or uh, 1N2M, to name, to name a few. And the third part, uh, the third pillar is uh, developed a mechanism to monitor the effective implementation of uh, digital standards, global digital standards, in our trade and cooperation agreements with uh, with these targeted uh, countries. Uh, as I said before, this is uh, a coordinated and support action with a budget of 1.5 million euros uh, distributed over two years. We plan to fund uh, uh, one project uh, in this uh, with this call. And if we go to the next slide, please. I can uh, say the, the countries that we are targeting with this uh, action, uh, we are targeting uh, entities from, uh, from Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Canada, Australia, and the United States of America. So as I said, could be local standard development organization, but also other stakeholders like uh, national administrations. And some of the key tasks that uh, we foresee that the, the beneficiaries of this uh, action uh, will have to, to address, 
for instance, some uh, is non-exclusive list, uh, but uh, for instance, setting a, a working group uh, that includes the European Commission and EU stakeholders, but also stakeholders for these uh, other targeted countries uh, to foster a strategic dialogue on the different technologies that the, the projects will, will tackle. Um, another task could be uh, have uh, regular studies on the relevant uh, digital standardization activities that are ongoing in these uh, in these uh, countries. Um, again, try to have a, an exchange of, of views, uh, organizing uh, joint outreach activities. Uh, we we aim for uh, joint conferences, uh, uh, workshops where we can uh, exchange uh, ideas or or agree on this on these uh, common positions. And uh, last but not least, uh, as um, digital standardization is uh, very research intensive, we aim also to, to foster uh, synergies with uh, ongoing and, and future research and innovation activities, uh, for instance, from, from Horizon Europe, but also from other uh, European or, or from other uh, programs, research programs from, from, the, from the targeted countries and also try to, to raise uh, awareness into the scientific communities about the, the importance of uh, standardization and try to, to also uh, contribute to, to the education of this, uh, of this uh, uh, yeah, scientific uh, community. So uh, this is uh, everything that I wanted to, to discuss about this, uh, this action. So now I, I give back the floor to Ramon and waiting for, for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlos. We will indeed open now the Slido again. You need to go to Slido, you need to enter the event code, info date. Then you can pass your question on this topic. Carlos will present another later on, so you will have more opportunities. So let us see if there are any questions for now. We will wait a few minutes. So, so you have the time they're reaching us yes so the first one carlos will project partners from singapore or south korea etc also be funded under human 65 um so i th i think yes uh, so uh, the, the the this uh, action is also open to to entities from uh, from this uh, from this uh, uh, third countries uh, and uh, and of course, uh, it, it, even if they are not participating in the in the consortium or, or receiving funding, uh, they will be uh, let's say contacted by the by the consortium to 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 participate in, the, in all the activities uh, that the project foresees. And the second question also, yes, you are correct. I uh, the the idea is that this this 1.5 million funding will be distributed over two years, uh, you are correct. Thank you, Carlos. Welcome. Let's see if we have any further questions, otherwise we will move to the next topic. Okay, we get confirmation. Thank you. No more questions for now. We move then to the um, to the next topic. Carlos, okay, thank you. Um, I don't see this is the correct slide, but maybe we can move to the. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Uh, this is the the correct uh, uh, slide. So this uh, this is the second action that I'm going to to present today, and uh, um, it uh, it focuses on uh, promoting. Uh, Yes, thank you. It focuses on promoting on uh, a global level both uh, European standards, but also the EU model for setting global interoperable standards. And uh, this action again comes as a support of the of the European standardization strategy. And uh, a bit more specifically, uh, as as outcome of the project, we would like to to see, uh, for instance. The, the promotion on, on a global level of uh, EU standards in, in key digital technologies, for instance, it could be standards that uh, the European standardization organizations, uh, Sensenelec and Etsy, are developing or will uh, develop in the near future in, uh, in topics such as artificial intelligence, uh, quantum, cybersecurity, uh, data, etc. 
Uh, so the idea would be to to bring these uh, these standards uh, into into international level because, as I said, these uh, these topics are, are normally uh, also decided at an international uh, stage. Um, the second is uh, to promote uh, the EU model of uh, of setting global interoperable standards uh, in in targeted uh, countries from the from the list that I will mention later on. And the, the third pillar of this project is uh, uh, understanding the ICT standardization ecosystems of the selected countries, and also when we deem uh, relevant to try to foster uh, capacity building uh, on these uh, ICT standardization ecosystems around EU values and, and interest. So again, this is uh, as a coordinated and support action, and the indicative budget is 2.5 million euros, uh, distributed this time over three years. So we again expect to fund uh, only one project, and uh, uh, a bit to highlight on this uh, on this project is that the the third pillar, the the capacity building in third countries. Uh, will be done uh, through the uh, funding, direct funding of micro projects that may involve local stakeholders. So that's why uh, we we ask that 40% uh, of of this funding is allocated to financial support to to third parties. And if we go to the to the next slide, I will give uh, a bit of more details. So the, this action uh, is, is a bit, uh, can be seen as a follow-up of a, a, a project that just finished recently, which was called the Indico, Indi International Digital Cooperation, which fostered uh, um, increased collaboration on ICT standardization between the EU and other uh, uh, countries, uh, mainly with, with two main, uh, through two main uh, uh, ways. The first is uh, was sharing best practices on, on a policy level. And the second was to uh, to have common work on standardization to, to help build the uh, open markets for all and to focus on, on interoperability. Um, the, so this project <clears throat> tries to continue with, with this work and tries to extend the geographical scope and the technological reach. So that's the why the targeted countries that we list there are, uh, for instance, uh, <clears throat> India, China, Brazil, which were all participants in, in Indico, but also selected countries from uh, Latin and Caribbean uh, uh, region, Latin American Caribbean, uh, Southeast Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, Western Balkans, or, or the Eastern Partnership. And um, some of the key tasks that uh, the, the project beneficiaries will, will have to accomplish are, are those written in the, in the work program. And uh, for instance, we foresee activities supporting the engagement on the EU standardization system, for instance, developing uh, examples of best practices of uh, uh, the EU standardization model or uh, examples of uh, harmonization of global standards or um, analysis of uh, uh, local standard development organization in these countries that are working on the on the topics identified in the rolling plan for ICT standardization, which is uh, a document uh, that uh, lists uh, ICT standardization needs in different uh, policy areas of the European Union. Another activity would be uh, try to organize uh, joint uh, workshops, joint hackathons, interoperability events. So try to have a, a, a dialogue and knowledge exchange between EU and, uh, and uh, stakeholders from these uh, targeted countries and to uh, indeed bring them together and, and exchange uh, knowledge and, and have a, a cross fertilization of ideas. And, uh, and the, the third uh, also would be to, to, to continue stimulating this uh, knowledge sharing through other uh, uh, dissemination activities or other communication uh, channels. And um, this uh, concludes again this, uh, this topic. So I, I give back the floor to Ramon for, uh, for all the questions that uh, you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlos. We are sharing again the details, pass the questions. And we will wait a few minutes to see if we have some. So the first question is uh, for DCSA, does the project consortium need to include CEN or 
Senelec or Etsy as partners in the project? Well, um, not necessarily, uh, but of course, uh, the participation of uh, Senelec and, and Etsy as the, the three uh, European standard organizations would be very extremely relevant for this uh, for this action because uh, we aim here that uh, there is uh, excellent knowledge of the European standardization system to to promote this this system to to these uh, targeted countries and uh, and also uh, we we aim uh, uh, for organizations that have a close uh, cooperation with uh, with uh, local entities or, or local SDOs from these uh, targeted countries uh, which uh, which is the case of uh, of the of the three associations and the like and it. so it's, it's not uh, um, mandatory is not written in, in the call that uh, they have to to be a part of the consortium but uh, it would be i think important uh, or it, it would be welcome that uh, they are uh, participating yes and uh, can the financial support to third parties be from African partners? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the idea there is that the, the, the project consortium will, uh, as I said, uh, uh, give direct funding to, to fund uh, micro projects with uh, local stakeholders from these different uh, uh, targeted countries. And of course, if uh, if one micro project is, is going to, to a specific uh, African uh, country, uh, indeed, local uh, partners from this African country will, will receive financial support to third parties. Uh, has both lump sums and financial support to third parties. This I will have to check in the work program. I don't know by heart. Um, So I'm not sure if the lump sum here is uh, is uh, in the in the call. I cannot see it uh, uh, in the text, but uh, it's, it's indeed the financial support to third parties. Uh, and also to to come back to the previous question of the uh, African partners, I also see now in the work program uh, that legal entities established in uh, African Union member states might participate in this uh, CSA as well. We got confirmation from Hugo Mireti from Hadea. Thank you very much. That indeed okay. this uh, legal cost will take the form of a lump sum in this topic. Okay, thank, thank you, you uh, colleagues of Hadea, for, for helping out to the, for this question. Okay, and we got confirmation that there are no more questions. So thank you very much, Carlos. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you. So uh, we move to the next uh, presentation, uh, also on the standard subject. It will be um, offered by uh, Gerko Tardos, his policy analyst at the Valorization Policies and IPR Unit at the Research and Innovation. Gergo, floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ramon. Can you confirm that um, you can hear me well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Indeed, I am from DG Research and Innovation uh, from the um, unit responsible for a knowledge valorization IPR. And I'm also going to present a um, coordination um, and support action in the domain of uh, standardization. So this um, this topic is uh, called the boosting industrial symbiosis by um, standardization. Um, and um, it is also um, a CSA of a value of um, 2 million euros, uh, which approaches standardization as an important avenue for research and innovation valorization. Um, this is the third topic um, DG Research and Innovation is proposing as means for to support the uptake of knowledge valorization. The first uh, two was proposed under uh, work program 21-22 and the respective uh, projects are ongoing. One is the um, Ages Booster, which is about to connect beneficiaries with standardization experts. And um, the other one is uh, the Stand for EU uh, under um, the, also under cluster four, which is uh, uh, which is on identifying obstacles in the way of standardization as a RNI valorization channel. So um, this um, topic here we are proposing um, now uh, complements the aforementioned two topics and also the uh, the the other um, CSAs which are um, being proposed by uh, our colleagues in DG Connect and DG Curl. So a couple of words about the policy uh, framework. This is a very um, strongly policy-oriented uh, CSA. 
Um, we have to we are referring here to the Green Deal, which is very clear on that uh, Europe must do um, uh, uh, to must create a sustainable, uh, more sustainable economy. And in this context, industrial um, symbiosis has been identified as a potential tool to help the EU reach its um, carbon neutral ambitions. Also, the standardization strategy refers to this uh, to this goal, uh, namely the ambition towards climate neutral, resilient, and circular economy, um, for which um, standards on testing methods, management systems, uh, or interoperability solutions is crucial. Um, but if you look at the current rate of secondary material and resources uh, being brought back to the economy, there is a, cr uh, a clear room for improvement as there are indications that uh, business ecosystem built on industrial symbiosis uh, principles use fewer um, natural resources than traditional industrial value chains. And this makes them more resource efficient and uh, also more competitive. So in this frame or in this context, this action um, should identify solutions on how standardization can allow stakeholders at all level uh, develop a shared understanding for processes by which wastes or byproducts of an industry or industrial process uh, become the raw materials for another. The, top, the topic um, aims to cover manufacturing in a wider context, taking into consideration waste treatment and management, energy use and materials sourcing. So this is a multi multidisciplinary approach, and of course, standards have a key, key role as they reduce the multiplicity of approaches, terminologies, um, measurements, uh, allowing for accurate benchmarking and target setting. So the proposal, proposals are expected to contribute to mainly the reinforcing the links between standardization and research innovation in circular value chains ensuring that standardization facilitates um, cross-sector interoperability at all level. It, uh, they are expected also to identify the major bottlenecks for standardization related framework conditions to support industrial symbiosis and to help the development of uh, agile and green standards to ensure interoperability in the domain of industrial symbiosis. And this is also very much in line with the implementation of the European Research Area Industrial Technology Roadmap for low carbon technologies. So, um, as I mentioned, the total indicated budget for this project is 2 million euros. And it is estimated that the um, uh, expected outcomes may be addressed by a project of a duration of about two years. We plan to fund one project in this call. In general, there is no specific expectations on the number of entities in, a, in, in, in the consortium, um, but it has to, of course, uh, fit with the project ambition and the expected outcomes. And this um, would, can be uh, addressed by applicants in a very wide uh, range. Uh, from standard development organizations to research and technology organizations, universities, private companies, including SMEs, industrial partners, innovation agencies. Um, but of course, the project may benefit from being addressed by a consortium that engage with high level experts in standardization um, and, and, and with this um, I would maybe one more thing, maybe just to uh, you. You had a question uh, in, on in relation to the previous uh, topic about lump sums. Indeed, here also eligible costs will take the form of uh, of a lump sum. So with this, I reach um, the the end of my um, my presentation, and I would give back the floor to Ramon. Many thanks for for your attention. Thank you, Gergo. Thank you very much. We move now to the to the questions to the Q and A. We open up a Slido for the viewers to pass their questions, and we'll have a few minutes. This.
In the meantime, Gergo, as we did for previous uh, presentations, if there is any particular tips, any remarks, uh, any elements where you want to make uh, extra extra focus, uh, please feel free. Okay, there are no questions so far. We will wait a little bit more, otherwise we'll move on to the next topics. Okay, yes, here we have a question, Gergo. Question is very specific. Can the coordinator come from any country? Um, the general rule uh, is followed here. So um, the, pro the, pro the, the, um, the project can be funded from any EU and associated countries. So the coordinator can come from these, um, these countries. Okay. I think that was the only one. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ergo. Thank you very much. We move now to the last uh, two presentations on the standard section. They will be uh, provided by Antonio Conte, is policy officer at the unit construction machinery and standardization, standards policy at the GROW. Antonio, floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ramon. I hope you can hear me properly. Yes, we can. Excellent. So good morning again also to all the uh, participants. Um, um, I'd just like to present uh, this morning a couple of uh, um, uh, proposals uh, uh, that uh, address uh, standardization from an education and uh, industrial policy perspective. The first one is uh, uh, this uh, uh, proposed uh, action that uh, targets uh, uh, universities and, and the higher education institutions. As you know, and as also has been confirmed by the previous uh, colleagues, uh, standardization has uh, actually um, a geopolitical uh, relevance. And this is why we also believe that uh, it's important to ensure that uh, uh, new experts uh, in standardization uh, will uh, um, will grow in the next uh, years and this can be done uh, through education in universities or other uh, um, education institutions so um, all in all we uh, want to promote uh, the um, creation of this uh, pool of european professionals uh, that will be able uh, to contribute to standardization uh, at the european and international level and thus we'll be able also to uh, support the positioning of the European Union as a global uh, standard setter. Uh, we know that uh, there are already some uh, universities uh, um, in uh, Europe where there are some uh, um, um, lectures or uh, activities in the area of standardization. Through this uh, um, action, we, um, um, we intend to promote uh, the, um, a closer cooperation uh, between uh, teachers and uh, professors uh, who should uh, team up uh, and in cooperation with industry, design uh, an innovative uh, teaching concept uh, for uh, standardization. This uh, teaching concept uh, should, uh, of course, uh, focus uh, on technical aspects of standardization, uh, but also should bridge uh, to uh, other societal facets of standardization uh, and integrate uh, human-centric standardization uh, and the EU uh, core values. So all in all, we expect that uh, this action will help uh, to bring together um, professors, uh, 
and other experts uh, who are uh, um, somehow uh, addressing standardization from different perspectives that are not just uh, the technical uh, perspective that usually we uh, consider. Um, this activity should also um, uh, foster the development of green and digital skills uh, um, and um, uh, underline what is the, uh, the, the support that uh, this could provide uh, to the policy priorities uh, and uh, what is the role that uh, all in all should be paid by standardization to achieve uh, uh, European policy goals. The expected results are uh, quite uh, clear, so we expect that uh, um, that uh, standardization uh, knowledge will be included in the curricula of university or higher education institutions. Um, and uh, this should in turn help to uh, increase the visibility of standardization in the, in the educational programs of universities and uh, higher education institutions. Um, we expect, as I said at the very beginning, in the near future, to see more and more uh, um, experts and professionals in this domain. Um, there is a need to, to, to ensure also a, a renewal of the people who are in this, uh, in this, um, in this domain, who are active in this domain. Of course, they, uh, the, exp the experience of these people is absolutely relevant, but certainly new, uh, new, new people and uh, a wider support and a wider range of expertise in all the domains will certainly be uh, necessary if we really want to promote also the European uh, presence in, um, in, um, at the international level in the sensation domain. Um, we expect also that through this action there will be the possibility to promote uh, uh, specific initiatives in the universities uh, through the organization of uh, specific academic standardization days or setting up a specific student associations that will be uh, active in relation to uh, standardization aspects. Um, um, this action uh, is expected to uh, be uh, supported with uh, uh, an indicative budget of uh, 3 million. In general, we would expect a single major action that would bring together all uh, 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 interested uh, uh, universities in, uh, in Europe. But still, uh, there is uh, the possibility to uh, support uh, some uh, more uh, targeted and, and, and the small action in this, uh, in this domain. And uh, with this, uh, I will uh, close my short presentation about this topic and um, hand over the floor to you, Ramon. Thank you very much, Antonio. Yes, we open again the floor for questions on this particular topic. Okay, here we go. The first question, is the consortium expected to involve industry representatives as well? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, uh, one of the objectives of this, uh, of this action is uh, to bring together uh, the academic world, if I can say so, with the industry and uh, all uh, other relevant stakeholders that have an interest in standardization but also in, um, uh, I would say, in social uh, sciences uh, or uh, in other domains uh, where uh, standardization has uh, clearly um, uh, uh, an interest or could have a dimension. So uh, the enlargement to other uh, players uh, who are not uh, necessarily uh, of, uh, coming from a technical world is also important. So, Certainly industry, but also other uh, um, other organizations or uh, 
representatives of other interests that are not necessarily technical. And the next question is, the, what is the recommended project duration? The duration of the project uh, should be between uh, one and two years. Uh, um, uh, this will also depend on the specific actions that will be proposed. Uh, but uh, in, in general, um, I would say that this would be the preferable duration of this action. OK. There is, we will take one last question, maybe two max. I read it aloud. This topic encourages international cooperation. How is this to be understood? Do Switzerland and or IAC, ITU, ISO count here? Are they funded? Um, international cooperation uh, is, um, is um, uh, promoted in all uh, our uh, actions. Um, in this case, uh, the usual uh, rules that apply to research uh, projects uh, will, uh, will apply. Um, so, um, essentially, uh, I would say that uh, this is uh, uh, um, uh, um, and, uh, the international cooperation is an important aspect uh, of, of, the, of the action. Um, so, the, the involvement also in the action of international players uh, certainly is, um, is um, um, to be considered. Of course, uh, taking into account the rules that apply to the participation uh, in the in the in the call, and in particular, I would like to make reference to the uh, Annex B, that is the usual uh, uh, Annex that um, uh, refers to the conditions for participation in this uh, type of calls. Thank you, Antonio. I think there are no further questions for these topics. This topic. Excuse me, if there were, uh, uh, viewers know that they can always use the, the Q&A functionality. We need to move now to the to the next uh, topic, it will be presented also by Antonio, and it will be the last of this uh, standard session. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, so this is um, um, uh, uh, um, the second uh, action that is uh, proposed by DigiGrow in the area of standardization. And here we are trying to uh, promote uh, uh, a better uh, um, uh, cooperation between uh, pre-normative research and uh, uh, industrial uh, ecosystems. Um, I must say that uh, DigiGrow has identified uh, 14 industrial uh, ecosystems that are uh, essentially uh, at the basis of our uh, 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 um, um, industrial activities in the European Union. And these ecosystems uh, range from uh, digital to the more uh, traditional uh, sectors, uh, like uh, the automotive, uh, the aeronautics, uh, and, um, and construction, and so on and so forth. So we believe that it's important to um, ensure that there is a better uh, cooperation between, uh, uh, between the pre-normative research uh, that is also stemming from, uh, from uh, other uh, research projects uh, and uh, the, the various uh, ecosystems uh, um, in order to exploit uh, synergies uh, um, among the stakeholders that are uh, involved uh, in, the, in the various projects and activities. Um, as a, as a consequence, uh, um, we hope uh, that uh, this uh, increased uh, cooperation uh, uh, will also help to increase uh, the European contribution and presence uh, in, the, in the formal European and international standardization activities. Once again, it's important to uh, underline the relevance of uh, an active uh, participation of uh, European uh, um, uh, experts uh, in international uh, work, but also the participation of uh, experts in the European uh, standardization activities that are carried out by European uh, standardization organizations. Uh, we expect also that through this action uh, there will be the possibility to, uh, to work uh, on the uh, development uh, of uh, uh, interoperability standards uh, for uh, uh, data sharing uh, uh, within uh, and across the various ecosystems, uh, bearing into account uh, the fair uh, data principles, uh, 
and of course uh, taking into account uh, uh, already adopted uh, uh, practices uh, in uh, in relevant uh, uh, context uh, um, in relation uh, with uh, with data and here uh, i would like to refer to the european research infrastructures uh, or the um, the the and the data spaces that are being developed at the uh, European level. Um, um, as a complementary result of this action, we also expect uh, that uh, some uh, specific uh, um, uh, activities uh, for uh, education and skills uh, within the ecosystems uh, will be uh, developed. And once again, we expect here that uh, relevant partners, relevant industrial partners and social partners will be associated in the, in the work. The results, um, as I said, uh, again, uh, we, we, we expect that this uh, action will contribute to the European industrial policy objectives. Uh, especially in relation to the green and digital transitions uh, and to the circular economy. Uh, by the way, I would like to underline that uh, in this uh, very moment uh, we are setting up uh, a high level forum on standardization uh, um, that uh, should uh, uh, bring together uh, uh, CEOs and representatives of uh, other uh, um, high level representatives at uh, European level uh, in the area of standardization together with representatives of the member states uh, in order to discuss uh, um, European uh, uh, standardization priorities uh, and uh, somehow to, to define uh, what uh, should be the, the, the way forward in the area of uh, uh, standardization policy development at European level in, 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 in all sectors. Regarding the results, uh, also uh, I would like to underline uh, that uh, um, we hope that uh, and we expect that this, uh, this uh, action will uh, uh, bring together the various communities that are involved in uh, pre-normative research, in the um, uh, industrial ecosystems, in the various supply chains that are, that are associated to the industrial ecosystems and also we have to develop uh, some uh, roadmaps uh, that uh, should be uh, um, uh, taken into account for uh, future uh, pre-standardization activities uh, uh, in uh, domains that are not actually covered by the uh, uh, ongoing work. Um, and uh, again, uh, as I said uh, previously, we expect also uh, to um, to see the development uh, of a platform that uh, should uh, um, help uh, the deployment of education and training and standardization uh, in uh, relation to the various industrial sectors that at the end of the day may have also different needs in terms of standardization. In this case, we have an overall budget of 8 million. Uh, several uh, uh, projects are um, expected since uh, we even the differences among the various uh, industrial sectors, we expect also that there could be different uh, um, specific uh, actions to be launched. And um, also in this case, uh, the, the funding will be done uh, through LAMSAMS. And um, I would stop here and um, back, uh, uh, I hand over back to you, Ramon. Thank you very much, Antonio. So we will open now the floors for questions on this last topic in the standard section. Let us see if there are any questions. We have a couple of minutes, then we will go for the break. One more minute. Yes. Here are the first questions. Uh, should proposals focus on one industrial ecosystem or more? No, uh, we have uh, maximum flexibility here. And um, since uh, 
uh, we are talking of a wide number of uh, ecosystems. Uh, the proposals uh, can, on, can, can also follow on uh, more than one. Uh. Again, this will depend uh, on, uh, on the interests and also on the synergies that uh, the proposal may, may uh, envisage, uh, even uh, bringing together uh, two or more uh, industrial ecosystems. So we don't need to have a, a specific action uh, or for, each, uh, for each ecosystem. Next question, will you fund eight, ten, eight to, ten, to 10 projects each in one industrial sector? No, the idea here is to have uh, uh, to have uh, um, to have uh, uh, eight, ten uh, uh, projects uh, in total uh, for the overall uh, domain. Uh, um, so we do not uh, in, we are not interested in small uh, specific uh, uh, projects uh, uh, targeting each industrial ecosystem. See, essentially, we would expect large or relatively large proposals covering one or more ecosystem with a comprehensive plan and comprehensive targets for 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 one or more ecosystems. But certainly, we not we do not want to have a granularity of small actions addressing a single ecosystem. Thank you, Antonio. I think that was it. We didn't receive any further questions. So thank you very much to you and all the previous speakers. We will now go for the break. We have 10 minutes, nine. We can. que ces deux, deux, deux monstres qui se, qui se font face et que chaque, la Russie n'a pas intérêt à aller à la guerre. On voit que on a...
pas changé et ne changerait jamais. Parce que et cela fait à peu près euh, 30 ans, depuis la chute euh, de l'Union soviétique, que les pays d'Europe de l'Est nous mettent en garde contre le danger russe, en expliquant que la Russie, non, n'avait pas changé et ne changerait jamais. Il enfin, n'y a pas eu de... Ah, on a refusé de les écouter. Enfin, un... Donc, la guerre... Et là, d'un seul coup, on en prend conscience. Parce qu'on sait très bien que si l'Ukraine tombe, Ah, sorry.
Welcome back. We will now continue um, with this session. Um, yes, first, a little reminder um, on the presentations that took place uh, two days uh, today, uh, two days ago, in particular, the presentation on uh, horizontal issues which tackles several, several, several elements that are, are of interest for, for various topics. Uh, that's why they are horizontal general. So uh, there you can find information about international cooperation, lump sums, um, and there were also several questions raised. So a strong encouragement uh, to, to also follow that session beyond those thematic ones, which are of more interest to you because these are very, very relevant. So invitation to look back into this presentation from Monday. I believe it was uh, it's the day that was presented. And also there will be another one uh, of uh, horizontal nature this afternoon at the, at the end of the, of the day. Uh, now we will move to the next uh, objective, an internet of trust. Here we will have a slightly different approach. We will not go for presentation of a topic and Q&A, we will in, instead present all the four topics and then um, have the past four, four, four questions. Um, we have four speakers here, sorry, three speakers here, uh, Jean-Luc Dorel, uh, Georges Lobo and uh, Jorge Gassos. Um, they work all at the Next Generation uh, Internet Unit um, at the uh, DigiConnect and they will uh, present the next four topics, uh, as I mentioned, in a row. And then we will uh, open up uh, the Slido for questions on all these four topics. So it will be important in this time that you specify for which topic uh, you are asking your question, unless, of course, you are presenting, asking a question for all those four topics, in which case it will also be helpful for the presenters to if you if you uh, if you spell it out in your question, so without further delay, I pass the floor to you, Jean-Luc. Ramon, can you hear? Me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, the um, the introduction, and uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, everyone to attend this session. Uh, I'll be um, together with my colleague George and, uh, and Jorge uh, presenting the, the topic uh, related to uh, the Internet of Trust. There are uh, four of them, actually. Can I have the presenter? Uh, I, I don't seem to have the, the presenter role. Uh, I think uh, it's not possible in uh, in here. You will need to share the, the slides and look. Maybe you can you can uh, give the indications and we will pass the slides. Will that work? Uh, well, can I can can't I be the presenter? Uh, no. All right. Okay. Let us all right, no we, could, we could try. It will take a few minutes. If it's possible, we will suggest to, that you, you give the indications and we will be moving the, the slides forward, backwards, as you indicate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, so, um, um, so, it's a introduction to the four topics because it's uh, it's sharing the same uh, uh, logic and um, and we are opening uh the the floor for the uh, internet of trust topic uh, so where do we want to go this is something that is um, uh, driving us and driving uh, the people working uh, in the context of next generation internet is the values the values that were commonly shared uh, in europe uh, and that were formalized recently in, uh, as part of the European Declaration for um, Digital Rights and Principles. Uh, and, and we are going to talk about privacy, uh, decentralization, uh, inclusion of everyone uh, when uh, reaching the internet, as well as the sustainability. Those are things that uh, drive and that's the, the direction where we want uh, the internet to move. Um, and uh, where do what do we do? Uh, well, 
uh, we are working on all aspects of the internet uh, technologies and stack uh, the so-called building blocks uh, can be identity management the, the management of data uh, the, the technology the decentralized technology uh, the search and discovery technology the architecture as a whole and uh, we are now now firmly moving into open source uh, building blocks uh, which constitute uh, a vast majority of uh, software and hardware well software um, uh, of the internet who are we targeting um, well obviously those are that are active in uh, contributing to open source um, commons open source uh, uh, software uh, can be individuals can be uh, startups uh, from uh, or SMEs or it can be uh, academics for instance or any uh, any contributors that is uh, is uh, active and, and can do something uh, in uh, in an open source uh, internet context and uh, what do we do as a as a funding program uh, is uh, is grants obviously and uh, mostly and I'll come that, to that uh, through um, financial support to some party this is uh, the main characteristic of this uh, program. Overall, what we want to drive is a human-centric internet that is uh, not centralizing everything, that is not uh, state-monitored internet and, uh, and that uh, enables uh, 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 better control from the users under a digital life. Next slide, please. Right, so where are we today? Uh, we have a, a large portfolio. Uh, we have more than 800 projects. And uh, what we can say is that it's, uh, it's quite unique in the sense that uh, those that are funded in Next Generation Internet are, are rarely uh, associated with any other uh, EC program. So it's, it's very complementary to, um, to other program. Uh, we have statistics that show that 80% never receive uh, any uh, funding from uh, the union. Uh, it's a very uh, selective program. Uh, the winning rate, rate is about 15%, which means it's, uh, we have a very, uh, we have excellent and very talented um, innovators. And those people that are uh, in, in our portfolio, we are talking about largely above 1,000 innovators. Uh, they are driven by uh, values uh, associated with open source uh, and they are actually changing the internet. Uh, those people are funded bottom up and they have clear idea on where to go along the, the value I mentioned and uh, they write code, they modify code. So there is no room for uh, analysis of requirement or uh, definition of architecture. This is um, really, um, the, the output is, is really uh, open source code. Next slide, please. So, um, where are we today? Uh, for the work program uh, 21 22, we have um, 62 million, and then we are going to have these photo pics for 47 million uh, euro in 23. Next slide, please. So, um, as I mentioned, one of the key uh, uh, <clears throat> characteristic of this program is the uh, massive recourse to uh, financial to support to third parties. 80% uh, of the budget goes uh, to FSTP. Um, we are doing that for a number of reasons. One is to uh, be able to target those, those innovators that are, as I mentioned, not um, uh, very well associated to other um, EC program, and we can contract with FSTP at the granular, very fine grain granularity uh, at the entity level, but also at even individual. And actually, we have a lot of individual contracts. But uh, it's also adapted to these stakeholders in terms of uh, low red tape, uh, short life cycle, uh, as well as um, a small, smaller budget. Next slide, please. How it works in practice, uh, it's very simple. We give money to uh, to intermediaries. So this is EC call. And then those intermediaries open uh, their budget to uh, third parties. That's the, the sub grantees that you see at the bottom of the picture. Uh, there are three flavors in this uh, call. So three topics are using this. 
the research and innovation action, uh, which uh, are two, uh, the fund, NGI fund and the cooperation with US, 80% of the budget will go uh, to FSTP. So it's essentially uh, an action to identify and support those uh, projects from some parties. Uh, and the uh, pilots, which are, uh, which is a pilot action, uh, sorry, an, an innovation action that um, uh, for, for which we foresee 15% of the budget to go to sub grantees. And each of these um, topics, uh, as we will see, have specific condition. And uh, the work program is, uh, is specifying what we expect from the intermediaries to provide not only the selection of the third party, but also a number of accompanying measures and supporting them, for instance, mentoring, coaching, support, standardization, etc. So that's the general idea, and uh, that's uh, how um, we implement that in NGI. Next slide, please. Right, so now I will focus on the first topic, which is called a Next Generation uh, Internet Fund. Uh, it's a continuation of the bottom-up approach uh, taken in the past, but uh, in, in this new program, it's uh, uh, more structured in a sense that we have one single uh, project. We will have one single project as opposed to the many uh, research and innovation action that we have in the past. Uh, we do that precisely to structure and ensure coherence of the portfolio. The logic remains the same, that is to nurture uh, a human-centric internet ecosystem, uh, turning the value mentioned into technology and uh, challenges uh, that will attract uh, top uh, innovators, uh, open source innovators, and uh, that will uh, create mature and grow uh, internet commons. So uh, piece of software, in some cases hardware, uh, that are governed by those creating it. Uh, in terms of technology, we are encompassing uh, the full stack. So unlike in the past, which we're um, addressing specific technology, here we are across the stack. So from bottom uh, hardware, open hardware, network layer, transport layer, firmware, operating system, virtualization technology, uh, identity management, middleware, uh, ledgers, uh, software productivity, tools, traffic supervision, up to uh, application can be horizontal or it can be even uh, for verticals. And we do that both server and device. Uh, and the aim uh, is uh, related to uh, the various uh, characteristics or qualities we want this in human centric internet to be. Uh, that is with uh, improved trust and privacy capabilities. Uh, ensuring portability, uh, discoverability, a better inclusion of anyone to this internet, uh, more sharing uh, and search of personal and non-personal data, uh, improve identity management, and overall uh, a right balance between the element of, of the architecture that is decentralization or centralization, security and energy efficiency uh, with the overall expectation of a better socio-economic impact because if we have better trust, we, um, we do more. Next slide, please. So in terms of scope, the program is uh, relatively specific. Uh, there is an, a number of, uh, of scope uh, that uh, applicants uh, should uh, look at and propose a plan for. Of course, uh, the, the main thing, uh, well, the, the first thing will be to uh, attract and, and select and, and uh, third parties projects. 80% of the budget in this topic goes to third parties, so that's a fundamental aspect. And a number of uh, support along the path of the maturity cycle. Uh, of the projects from early ideas to maturing phase to critical mass uh, and then to a sustainable mode. In this example, it's, uh, it's related to foundation, but it can also be a uh, uh, for profit uh, organization. The work program is not specific uh, on that. But uh, for all the steps, a number of services are uh, proposed or asked. Uh, for the maturing phase, we are going to talk about security assessment or security audits, sorry, 
uh, accessibility audits. There are standards for uh, uh, accessing uh, pages, web pages, for instance. How to make sure deploy deployability is, is easy by uh, packaging. Support multilingualism, that's essential for addressing the European market. Uh, support documentation, uh, support licensing uh, regime, and uh, different questions that could arise from the different um, licenses. Uh, then reaching critical mass, where here it will be essential to have a, a very good um, management of the communities um, and also potentially contribution to standardization. And then it's uh, it's going to be about uh, the long term sustainability uh, with a number of action um, that could be provided, for instance, legal hosting, defining the funding models, the governance and the maintenance strategy. Next slide, please. In addition to this, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, the, this task related to the, the life cycle of projects, uh, we expect the proposal to provide uh, element to uh, actively manage the portfolio and give a, a coherent picture of the funded third parties. Um, identify tools that can be reused uh, so to make sure that uh, we are not reinventing the, the wheel. Ensure successful collaboration with other NGI uh, projects and action. Uh, seek collaboration with like-minded uh, funding efforts um, at uh, various levels. Uh, and uh, one element is that uh, as it's open source, they have to provide, uh, uh, demonstrate their understanding of uh, uh, of open source environments through the life cycle. Next slide, please. In terms of expected uh, uh, outcomes, there are four of them. Uh, the key one is the human centricity of the internet uh, along the line of the, of the value and principle I mentioned. Uh, building blocks, uh, so technologies, uh, Clearly, that's the concrete uh, output. Uh, can be a contribution in GitHub or any forge uh, that uh, improve uh, the internet in the various direction. An ecosystem that is a structure, uh, so uh, that there, where there is there are synergies among the, the different uh, projects, and that uh, lead to the creation uh, of new internet commons. Uh, finally, uh, synergy with uh, uh, the pilots and, and in particular, but in general, all other um, like minded action. Condition for the call is next slide, please. So it's a uh, 27 million uh, budget and we'll select one project. Very important, <clears throat> uh, we put an additional uh, condition or sorry, criteria. In criteria three implementation uh, capacity and proven experience of the consortium to create and grow internet commons based on open source software hardware and standards so uh, evaluators uh, will uh, as a criteria take this uh, into account uh, duration 42 months so three years and a half it's a it's a, sorry it's a, it's an estimation uh, for third parties, the budget between 50k to 150k uh, for indication, indicated duration of 9 to 12 months and uh, 90, 80% minimum of a budget related to third parties. The last sentence is a bad copy pass, so uh, please ignore it. Uh, it was uh, relevant for another uh, topic. With that, uh, I'm concluding this presentation of the fund. At which was mentioned by Raman, the question will be. Um, taken all together at the end, and I give the floor to George that will present the uh, topic on pilots. Thanks, Jean-Luc. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> yeah, so here I will present um, the, the pilots for the next generation Internet. So it's building on what has been done uh, in the previous years of uh, next generation NGI.
uh, as we call so this uh, is will be a set of innovation action so with uh, sh they should be closer to the market uh, as it is defined in the uh, horizon Europe and it's to these actions should uh, foster the, the take up of NGI technologies and solution and to integrate them in real life situation in different use case could be industrial societal and in order to uh, create also emergence of ecosystem adopting this um, these uh, systems. So, uh, this, uh, sorry, why did you move? Can you go back, please? Yeah. So, uh, the sectors uh, here, they are indicated, but it's not exhaustive. So, I mean, public service, uh, I would say it's uh, quite horizontal because, uh, uh, I mean, it covers healthcare, public administration, etc. But as well, uh, you have uh, supply chain management, transport, finance, uh, creative, I mean, whatever, and uh, uh, you have the list and uh, here you can have uh, different ideas. So, the pilot, they should include the development, the, the integration, testing, deployment, update and operation activity. So, they should demonstrate that using of this solution can, can work uh, in all this, um, in, in all this uh, way. <clears throat> and uh, the focus, of course, uh, is on open source solution, both uh, software and hardware and the integration and uh, to ensure that we have uh, portability and uh, replicability. And of course, that uh, if you address also interoperability, it's even better. And uh, it should address, I mean, every pilot should address at least two different vertical and also uh, include what are the interdependency. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? So the outcome, so here it's to demonstrate that uh, the technologies that have been developed in NGI uh, can be used in the, um, in the series, uh, I mean, in real life situation, they can be deployed and they are, uh, they, they can have an impact. Uh, it's also because, uh, of course, open source, uh, it's open source, the code is freely available, but you need, uh, people need to work. So, um, this is to demonstrate that with this, uh, it creates new business opportunity and we can have sustainability models based on open source. There are a number of them, but here is to, to support the new innovators that have been uh, discovered by NGI. And as well to continue to support in this way the top internet innovator. So it's also to support, uh, I would say, in a sense, the sovereignty of Europe and to ensure that the internet evolution follows the human centric approach that Jean Luc presented to you before. Uh, next slide. So here, uh, more information. So there are no uh, specific criteria on that. So uh, here, as I say, the commission in the work program is written from uh, 3 million to 5 million uh, for a project. So here as well, I mean, here it's also indicative. So uh, if uh, projects that are going below uh, would also be accept if necessary. And as I say, I mean, it does not preclude submission and selection of different amounts. The total indicative budget for this topic is 14 million, so we expect to have several proposals and several projects coming out of this call. And the duration should go from uh, two to three years. Um, of course, uh, different uh, timing can also be proposed uh, according to that. Uh, there will be also a request for a focusing uh, effort. Uh, I mean, uh, financial support to this party could be uh, will be also uh, used to involve the internet innovators here because we are talking about pilots and not uh, strong development. It was more about uh, deployment and uh, using the solution in a specific use case. The contribution asked uh, through financial support to third parties would be from 10 to 50k uh, per project, a range per, per project. And the duration, of course, it's, uh, it's smaller from uh, six to nine months. And therefore, each project, a minimum of 15% of the total request EU contribution should be alloc allocated to financial support to third parties. And uh, of course, the third party should come from the NGI open source innovators 
that can be consulted as well on the NGI. We have a catalog of these innovators. Um, and um, I think that's all. I think it's time to give the floor to Jorge Gazos for the collaboration um, with the US. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now I will present the first topic, which is related to international collaboration. We don't hear you very well, Jorge. Hello, I'm going to present the third topic related to international collaboration in the area of NGI. Can you listen to me better now? Yes. Is it okay? Okay. So this one is, is, is very specific because we are talking about international collaboration with the US and in particular with the National Science Foundation, NSF. In the past, we had pre other projects in, in previous calls that were wider in scope. So the collaboration was with the US, but in not particular, it was open to any participation. In this case, it, this is for a coordinated call with National Science Foundation. So it's not possible to present proposals that are focusing on collaboration with industry or with other agencies from the US government. And the second particularity is that it's a project that will be implemented through a financial support through to third parties. So the objective of the project is to come together with NSF and launch a coordinated calls between the project and NSF for the support of a, a specific research and innovation projects in the areas of a, a next generation internet. This covers, like in the previous topic, areas in the wide sense of trust and privacy, data management, electronic identities, internet architecture, etc. And the purpose of the, of the individual projects that will be supported is research that will lead to advanced technology development. NSF is a, is a research focused organization in the US, but it, they also may include a demonstrator and joint contribution to a standards. And the proposal should support open source software and open hardware uh, as in the previous cases. Next slide, please. So the expected outcomes of the collaboration first is the reinforced collaboration with the NSF and also a collaboration in terms of technology services and standards. The second outcome that we expect is to uh, promote an ecosystem of researchers, open source developers that will continue the collaboration with that has been established through the project so that there is an ecosystem that goes beyond the duration of the project. And of course, as much as possible to generate new business opportunities and to support policy objectives of the European Union. Next slide, please. And now we come to the time of and conditions. This is a project of 4 million euros and we are expecting uh, to support one project for this. Uh, because we are going to have uh, three calls, the one of the, uh, uh, in the call text is supposed that we will have three open calls for FSTP together with NSF and the projects, the individual projects will be of the duration of, um, of 18 months. The expected duration of the overall project is expected to be around 48 months. Individual projects, as I mentioned, will have an indicative duration of 18 months and a typical budget of 150,000 uh, euros. And a minimum of 80% of the total requested contribution should be allocated to the third parties. This means that uh, if we take into account the amount of money that uh, will remain for the consortium to run the, the, the thing, it's expected that, I mean, obviously this is, a, that the consortium will be lightweight. The, you cannot expect to have a very large number of, of partners in the consortium. It should be quite focused on the activities that, um, that, should, that are the target of this call. And the final condition is that only organizations established in the EU member states and associated countries are eligible to the financial support the, through the third parties. And with this, I finish this part of the presentation and I give the floor to Jean-Luc for the last topic. Uh, hello again. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Can we go to the next slide, please? Many thanks. So the last topic is the next generation Internet Commons policy. 
uh, relates to a very simple simple fact. If you look at the, the software used in Europe, uh, the vast majority has a strong uh, uh, internet, uh, sorry, open source components. And so at, at, and on one end, it's, it's part of our uh, digital life. On the other end, it's not very well recognized. Um, for instance, at the strategic level, there is little representation of the community involved. Uh, a lack of structure, a gap between grassroots commoners and uh, top-down sovereign policy, uh, as well as a fragmented funding landscape. So against this um, uh, status or this uh, situation, uh, this uh, topic will um, uh, support the policy of, uh, uh, of uh, internet commons. So that's the, the pieces that we are commonly used uh, through a number of actions. Um, on one hand, uh, first uh, to uh, identify these communities of commoners. Uh, and uh, for instance, we have Activity Pub, uh, we fund uh, a large number of projects in this context. So, what, are, what is this community, our activities, um, and uh, what are the sub communities inside it? Uh, measure the leverage effect. So, if we put one euro in a community, how much leverage we get in terms of resources or additional funding from other sources? Um, bringing a, um, a planning perspective uh, across the um, multi-annual framework that is until 27 uh, in order to um, uh, anticipate expected maturation of the various commons incubated in NGI, carry out consultation uh, so that these commons um, uh, are along the line of European sovereignty policies so this consultation will certainly involve member states. Um, then uh, develop a, a plan to support commoners, uh, notably uh, in terms of funding, and um, identify a way to establish a one-stop shop, uh, which would be the, the point where uh, commoners will be able to gain information uh, in uh, the various uh, funding. <clears throat> uh, Create and animate a group of experts. It will be important to regularly analyze the portfolio, identify the trends, uh, and potentially align with uh, priorities. Uh, next slide, please. Then uh, an action uh, for uh, creating synergy. Uh, there are uh, a lot of similar efforts uh, in the US, for instance, with foundations. Uh, but also in some member states. So this uh, policy will have to align uh, with the digital commons uh, policy uh, elsewhere. Elaborate governance model so that uh, we integrate at a very early stage of the future uh, commons uh, aspects related to European strategic autonomy, but also uh, about uh, the maintenance strategy. <clears throat> And finally, uh, organizing strategic event in, uh, in collaboration with the NGI Outreach Office, which is an ongoing project, in order to uh, liaise and bridge the gap with decision makers at various level. Uh, these pro the, the applicants should demonstrate how they are familiar with the open source uh, context and also um, with the technology uh, building blocks uh, that makes the internet. Next slide, please. The uh, expected out out outcome is for a stronger integration <clears throat> of the initiative uh, with the digital commons policy at national uh, member state level and European level. A long term, a long term strategy for Internet commons, uh, which are critical for sovereignty and trust. Uh, a smooth articulation of the activity, um, which is which are essentially bottom up with uh, more top-down uh, strategic views, uh, for instance, from member states or from at European level, uh, so that uh, there is a, uh, a good articulation uh, between the two, which is uh, not always easy, and a more coherent funding uh, landscape, notably uh, for the commoners, those that are uh, building uh, the internet uh, commons. And finally, next slide, please. Um, it's a two million budget. We expect to fund one proposal for 36 months. That's finish our presentation uh, and uh, back to you, uh, Raman. 
thank you very much, the three of you, Jean-Luc, George, Jorge. So we will now move to the to the Q and A for all these four topics. Yes, uh, the details haven't changed. You need to go to Slido, enter the event code info day, and then preferably please uh, oh yes. Yes, and then um, enter your question. Please uh, indicate the topic, if possible, or indicate if your question applies to all uh, or more than one topic. And this will help the presenters to, to address them. We haven't received any questions yet, but we can wait a few more minutes. These were four topics, so still have some time. Okay, here we go. First question, it's FSTP for African countries. Right, um, I guess this is for all the topics that have uh, FSTP, uh, which is uh, the, three, uh, the, the three topics uh, except the CSA. Um, the general principle is that uh, FSTP should uh, bring, uh, should have a European dimension. Uh, uh, so there, there must be this European dimension. The second element is that uh, the intermediaries are the one that are uh, setting up uh, the rules for participating, which may or may not be, uh, well, which may complement uh, also uh, rules in the work program. So if I take the topics one by one, uh, the first topic, uh, the um, uh, the fund does not uh, make any uh, any uh, statement on that, so it can be also uh, uh, we we can fund depending on how the intermediaries build their eligibility condition uh, for uh, African countries. Uh, the same for the uh, the pilots, uh, but uh, for the one on US, uh, we are uh, clear that it's only for uh, EU and uh, associated countries. Thank you very much, Jean-Luc. We haven't received any further questions yet. We'll wait to see if we get any more. Yes, there is another one. Intermediaries are from uh, research and development institutes, right? Okay, so I guess again, it's, uh, it's for all the three topics that have uh, FSTPs. Um, so uh, for the fund, uh, we are not uh, prescriptive on what type of intermediary, what legal structure of intermediaries can be. Uh, but if you read the work program, you will see that there is a strong uh, incitation that intermediaries, that is consortium at large, uh, has a very strong open source uh, knowledge. Uh, and it's even uh, in the case of the first topic is a, is a sub criteria and criteria three. Um, otherwise, uh, it can be, but uh, it can be also uh, NGOs, uh, institutions uh, specialized in funding open source, 
Uh, it can be uh, anyone that has experience with uh, FSTP or uh, open source in general. Okay. Thank you very much, Jean-Luc, George, Jorge. So um, just stick to the point and uh, within the time. So big thanks. Uh, and now we will move um, to the to the next uh, the next section, the next heading or objective on extended reality. We will have three topics here, and they will all be presented by Adelina Cornelia Dinu. She's program assistant at the Interactive Technologies Digital for Culture and Education Unit at DigiConnect. Adelina, floor is yours. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, just a small question before: Do we go to through all three uh, presentations, and then we have the Q and A, or do I stop as initially? Uh... I would, uh, we can go back to the to the usual approach and stop after each presentation and uh, and in any case later on if 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 some of the applic uh, viewers would like to ask a question about the previous topic they they can do they can do that okay. as well. It was just for a small person. Thank you again. So the first uh, the first topic. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, the first uh, topic on the extended reality. It's still the next one. Okay, thank you. So the first uh, topic out of the, the free, as Ramon mentioned uh, before, uh, is uh, for next generation extended reality. Uh, it's a research and innovation action, what we are uh, calling for here. And this topic targets next generation of XR uh, devices and applications, which are human centers, which provide uh, intuitive and realistic user uh, experiences by exploiting a cross fertilization of different technologies. And I mentioned here just some of them, uh, 5G, Internet of Things, AI or, or Edge Cloud, and all these across different domains of use such as education, manufacturing, health. But this is just, these are just some examples, so it's in no, by no means an exhaustive, uh, an exhaustive list. The XR devices and applications should be at the same time more realistic, more affordable and gender neutral. They have to be developed by, by European companies and respect the European values, and at the same time aim at technological sovereignty and resilience. Then some, some figures, some conditions for, for this call. There is a, a small um, error on, on this uh, slide about the, the total budget. It is 26 million euro. The EU contribution per project here, we expect project ranging from 5 to, to 8 million euro. Uh, the activities uh, should start at a low TRL, being a research innovation action uh, uh, TRL 2, and to expect that by the end of the project, they, they would reach a TRL uh, 5. The indicative duration that we think appropriate to, to uh, arrive to the outcomes expected is 36 months. And what it is really important for, for this topic is the involvement uh, of the SSH disciplines, and we want here an effective contributions of experts from the uh, social uh, sciences and humanities, also from, from institutions. So really an, an inclusion of all uh, relevant um, SSH uh, actors in order to, to produce some, some effects that would enhance both the, the societal impact of the, uh, of the uh, activity, research activities that, uh, that are aimed for. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So why you see here typed one is because in this uh, for this topic uh, we have two uh, types of uh, of research and innovation actions that we are calling for, and the first one uh, regards the development and integration of um, XR hardware and components. And this includes the use of uh, the available technologies uh, regarding chips, displays, optics. So using the technologies that already are uh, available in order to create a new generation of uh, FXR devices in order to, to provide at the end uh, a greater visual uh, comfort, but also uh, in what concerns uh, uh, the wearables and the social uh, comfort. 
Then, uh, as you can see here, there is a special relevance that should be given to uh, specific uh, to specific aspects, and and this is very very important for for uh, for this call. So, for example. Um, uh, importance uh, should be given to technological uh, breakthroughs in uh, photonics and in, in raw materials that should aim to increase the image quality and also to reduce uh, the size and the weight of, of XR devices because, as you know, the, the, the comfort is, is very important. For the moment, the uh, head-mounted devices are, are still, uh, are still uh, heavy and not particularly comfortable for the common user. And then uh, attention should be given also to, to display and to optical elements, so, so as to, to bring the, um, the capabilities of, of these XR devices as close as possible to, to the human uh, vision. We aim also for, for more efficient architectures uh, for, the, for having an enhanced uh, performance, but also to reduce the, the power consumption and to have um, an improved uh, heat uh, dissipation. And these not, uh, novel systems that are, are, are targeted, they should cater to the widest range of users possible in order to, to democratize the, the, the use of, of XR devices. And we, uh, we include here also the, the persons that would need um, a prescription a correction, uh, for example. Then uh, attention should be also given to advanced optical and photo detector technologies for, um, for sensing system or to innovative XR connectivity uh, components that should support the high demanding requirements that are uh, in point of view of, of latency, in point of view of data rates and, and resilience uh, for, for XR. And uh, last but, uh, but not least, uh, we should um, have novel materials uh, that have a tailored or specific optical, mechanical and, and processing uh, properties in order to, um, to enable an overall uh, miniaturization and environmentally sustainable uh, mass production of, of these uh, future uh, XR uh, devices. Next slide, please. So this is the second type of, uh, of research innovation action, and this concerns a new the development of, of new solutions that aim to improve the, the user experience, to improve the, the skills and capacity, uh, while being used in, in XR uh, setups, uh, both for, for social and, and professional use. And we include here uh, tools and, and services for virtual worlds such as uh, uh, such as the metaverse, uh, such as uh, 3D models. Uh, we refer here also to tools such as um, and, and services such as uh, full body uh, avatars, such as intelligent agents. And these these uh, solutions should seek to to enhance the interoperability, the performance, and and um, and also the accessibility of the of the experiences. They should in, the proposal should include uh, here prototypes that are validated in, in realistic scenarios and that prove uh, how how they know how um, how innovative that the developed uh, solutions are and also how how they advance the the state of uh, of the art. They should exploit uh, for for uh, arriving here all the uh, uh, synergies with all. Um, domains, um, relevant domains and, and disciplines. Uh, what I uh, forgot to mention uh, uh, before, uh, is uh, regards the the type of um, the type of uh, the two types. So for this one, it's just one that will be funded, and uh, while for for the other one, it's um, only one. Yeah, the so one for the first one, and at least one for the second type. This was all for for this first uh, this first topic on on XR. If there are any questions already available. Thank you, Adelina. Yes, we will now open the floor for questions in Slido. I will give a few minutes to see if any questions reach us. Otherwise, we will move on to the next topic. Yes, here we go with the first one. 
extended reality developed by EU companies. It means that tools like Unreal Engine USA or even cannot be used for research. Uh, when we say it's XR developed by uh, EU companies, so it's the X, the not the the platforms that we know that, for example, there are not uh, where there is monopoly on the market. Of course, you, you cannot you cannot have. A, a, you cannot ask for EU, but where there is an EU options, we prefer that it's the EU option that is used. Wherever available an option, an EU option. Okay, here again, another question pointing to location. You specifically mentioned European companies. What about companies based in Europe, but headquartered outside of Europe? Are they included? No. So these are uh, especially we mean here European countries. So uh, European companies. So you uh, companies that are headquartered outside uh, Europe are not considered European companies. Okay, I think that's uh, that's it for this first topic. So we can move to the next one. To the next one. Yes, sure. So. Um... The innovation action. Okay, thank you. So that that should be. Um... So this uh, this next call on on XR uh, is an innovation innovation action that targets the industry of 5.0, and here we uh, we expect uh, projects resulting from uh, from this call uh, to develop XR made in Europe, contributing to uh, to technological uh, sovereignty. We expect them to contribute also to the development of, of European platforms for the virtual worlds and to support the use of uh, of XR technologies for a sustainable uh, human centric and resilient European industry and these three uh, qualities are uh, characteristics are, are very important. Some basic figures for for this topic: the indicative to, uh, budget is 25 million euro. Uh, the contribution per project ranges from five to eight. As mentioned before, it's an innovation action with uh, the activities uh, supposed to start. Uh, as low as a TRL four and arrive at the end of the project at a TRL between seven and and eight. Next slide, please. Uh, for this uh, topic, also we have two types of um, of proposals that we target. Uh, for the first type, uh, for which we expect to to select uh, one project. Uh, we refer here or we target the development of uh, a fixar um, application uh, to support uh, the companies in all the in, in the industrial uh, ecosystems. And the applications targeted should be robust, should be gender neutral, safe and, and trustworthy, it, particularly as regards the, the cybersecurity, the privacy and, and the health uh, and the health issues. They should uh, exploit all the value chain uh, in, in, in the XR domain. So it starts from, from academics, but also including industry representatives and uh, what is very important, the end users in in uh, in, in scenarios uh, that are uh, very well uh, um, uh, structured, and the proposals should also include uh, activities uh, that should make available uh, the results and uh, of the of the project to the widest uh, uh, public uh, possible. So they should have uh, dissemination activities in place and uh, exploitation for, for the outcomes to, to, a high, uh, to a high level. If we can go to, to the next slide, please. Thank you. So for uh, for this uh, second uh, type, uh, we, we target the creation of a, of a European uh, platform. And as here, the, the support of and um, the mobilization of XR innovators is key uh, to, to this uh, uh, second type of, uh, of uh, projects uh, that you want. Uh, here, it's, there is a minimum of 60% of the total uh, EU contribution that should be allocated to, uh, to third parties. Um, via uh, at least uh, free, uh, free open calls 
And here, when we uh, when we say uh, third parties, uh, we refer especially to outstanding XR innovators, uh, to SMEs or any other um, multidisciplinary actors uh, in uh, in the field. Uh, solutions provided by um, by this uh, project should aim to cover as many industry ecosystems as possible and end users involvement as mentioned also before is really important uh, especially in the uh, definition of the uh, specifications and um, and testing uh, and for this uh, second type only one proposal uh, will be funded uh, I think that was the last slide for for this topic. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Adelina. Again, we open a slide for questions from the from the audience. We'll wait one more minute. Yeah. Okay, I got confirmation. There are no further questions. <clears throat> there are no questions actually this topic at all. So we can go to the next one. We can go to, to the next one. So next slide, please. Yes, it is the correct one. Yeah, so the, um, the last uh, uh, topic on uh, ONIXR concerns um, coordination and support action in order to support the emergence of an open human-centric metaverse. A little bit of, of, of background for, for this CSA. Uh, so you, you have all uh, heard lately more and and more often the the word uh, the word metaverse and, and this is because uh, we consider the metaverse to be one of the the big challenges of the future and this is due to the to the huge business potential that it uh, that it has but also to the to the impressive applications uh, for both industrial and and, and societal use and these are uh, plays an important role here as, as core uh, technologies. So this is uh, where uh, this, um, this uh, topic uh, uh, stems from. Uh, and what we expect uh, from, uh, uh, from this topic is just one proposal of, uh, of 2 million euros, so with an indicative uh, budget of, of 2 million euros. So a coordination and support action that should help Europe to, to co-shape and promote an open, decentralized and trustworthy, um, uh, and trustworthy um, uh, metaverse. Uh, in line with uh, with the vision of human centric uh, uh, technology set out in the EU declaration on digital principle uh, and rights and the, this selected uh, proposal uh, should uh, contribute to the three uh, important uh, dimensions of people uh, technologies and infrastructures um, relevant to to the european uh, vision of the metaverse and this is also in uh, in in the frame of the of the initiative that uh, commissioner uh, breton uh, announced in in in, uh, in one of his blogs on uh, specifically on uh, on uh, on metaverse uh, a little bit of of um, of details on what this proposal is uh, actually supposed to to do as as coordination as opposed to it, it has to contribute to the um, uh, to structure and to support the metaverse uh, community so it 
should have a role in, in community building and in putting the stakeholders together. And uh, in order to, to achieve that, it should organize a vast uh, uh, engagement uh, process with uh, all stakeholders, including, uh, including citizens. It should reinforce the links uh, between the, the various um, metaverse-related uh, uh, elements or building blocks, as you want to call them. And here we include um, technologies like uh, XR, uh, AR, or blockchain, but also platforms uh, connectivity. Uh, it should also help uh, the European Commission on, on, uh, on um, defining uh, an EU strategy and a roadmap for, uh, for the metaverse, uh, also on contributing to, to defining um, standards for the metaverse, industry standards, uh, on um, identifying also uh, important um, important aspects related to to ethics, related to a societal and and other uh, economic aspects, but also to to IPR. And uh, also, it is very important that it should. Um, closely collaborate and build synergies with other existing European uh, initiatives, uh, but also uh, international uh, cooperation for, uh, for this uh, important uh, topic that is, uh, that is the metaverse. Uh, so we hope that is very uh, the good moment to have uh, such a coordination and support action in order to, uh, to, to, uh, um, to keep the, the speed with what uh, other uh, actors in other continents are, are doing on, on Metaverse. Um, this was, was all for, or for this topic. Also, if there is already some question available. Thank you, Adelina. Thank you. This presentation, this very hot topic indeed nowadays. Exactly, exactly. So it was a very last moment uh, added topic uh, that we hope we'll have something uh, uh, meaningful at the end. Okay, so let's see now an opportunity for the the viewers to ask questions on on this on this topic. We can give a few minutes. We are still good in terms we of. We recovered at the, the time. Uh... <laughs> Yes, you did very well. So let's see now if, if there are any questions from the audience. Otherwise, it means that you were crystal clear. We can wait. And then have their colleagues behind the scene can let us know if there are no questions. Nothing has arrived so far. So thank you very much, Adelina, again thank for you. this presentation. Okay, so we can now move to the last uh, heading objective of this morning's session on destination six, touching upon digital humanism and human compatible technologies. There are two topics under this um, objective. The first one will be presented by Eric Peters. Deputy Head of Unit at the Unit Implementation of Regulatory Framework at DE Connect. Eric, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, I, we have two, two subjects uh, to be addressed, so I will just address the, the first one, so on the digital humanism, uh, putting people at the center of the digital transformation. Next slide, please. Uh, this uh, coordination and support action is taking place uh, in the broader overarching strategy for uh, digital transformation in Europe. You have heard uh, a lot of projects which have been dealing with uh, making more human-centric technologies, and the last uh, project on, on Metaverse is a, is a very good example of that. Uh, this coordination and, and support action is, is trying to address this issue of human-centricity of digital technology from a more strategic point of view. So the, the CSA is, is really anchored into our recent digital decay strategy, which is the, the, the newest strategy from Member States and the Commission, which agreed uh, to uh, accelerate and intensify uh, the actions in order for uh, 
people and society and our companies to better take the opportunities uh, led to digital transformation. And uh, we did that in, in, in two ways. I mean, first, it, is, it, it, it was made through a policy program, which will be published later this uh, month, uh, which is a regulation that uh, agrees on a set of uh, rules, governance, targets, a bit like for climate change, in which uh, the EU as a whole is uh, undertaking to achieve a series of tar targets in technologies and digital skills, um, uh, microprocessors, digitalizations of company and businesses, digitalization of, of, of public services. So that's a, a very strong anchor. But the second leg of that strategy is really to make sure that these, these technologies and these activities have a purpose. And this purpose is to really contribute to make a better life of people. I mean, with the COVID crisis, we have seen the huge potential of digital technologies, but we have seen also the danger and the risks that uh, these technologies could have on people and society. And this second pillar is really at the center of this coordination and support actions. We have um, established clear objectives in terms of human centricity in our digital, digital uh, decade strategy and also a declaration on digital rights and principles that was referred to uh, previously in the in the last project and uh, this declaration and these objectives need now to be implemented and this coordination and support action uh, for which we have uh, an evaluation of 1.5 million euro as a budget is precisely to help us and to be linked to the policy making process to to implement um, this part of values and to make sure that uh, the transformation that the EU is in the undertaking is going to be in the right direction to protect uh, people and, and the society. And for that, very concretely, we don't expect um, a, a discussion on what digital humanism is, uh, although we, of course, will need some sort of a analytical uh, background to be uh, uh, starting the, uh, the work, but we, we expect the applicants to really uh, demonstrate their ability to, to do five important things. I mean, first, it is to really build a network of people, of experts that are uh, across uh, disciplinaries, uh, which help in particular to make sure that we can link uh, digital technologist experts with sociologists, ethnologists, experts, and philosophers. So, the, so to make sure that uh, the people are not working in silo, but really to make sure that we can have a common reflection on how uh, we can do our digital uh, transformation a better place for a uh, human being. The second element is, is very important. It's also really to connect with this digital decade strategy, to, to be aware of uh, the, the process which has been uh, put forward to know the Declaration on Rights and Principles, to be uh, really uh, well expert uh, in this domain in order for the conclusion of the work to really feed into the policymaking process uh, as we wish. The third element is that uh, you know, nowadays it's very important that uh, we, we can really uh, diffuse uh, ideas and standards across the society. It's not anymore a time where just command and control can work. We need to have all the, the ecosystem uh, to be uh, knowing, to be also uh, using uh, standards in terms of ethics, in terms of values, from the business developer to the investor who are, with, who are investing in, in new startup, new technologies, to make sure that all the actors of the ecosystem can use, are aware of, uh, these standards and these values that we are aiming at for uh, for Europe. The fourth element is really concrete recommendation that we expect from the work uh, in order for uh, enabling us to better understand how we can bridge the gap on the lacking that we have, that we are facing, on the problems, the obstacles that we are facing collectively all through the ecosystem to make the solutions based on values uh, more useful and more efficient uh, across the society. So this is really important and we think that, you know, at least a recommendation that could flow from the analysis uh, would be extremely helpful. 
And last but not least, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have a declaration on, on digital rights and principles that will be um, signed by the Commission, the Parliament and, and the Council this week uh, and published uh, later on. And this uh, declaration, which, which needs to be uh, implemented, and this implementation will happen in, in, in different ways, but it's very important that we can follow and better monitor this declaration so that uh, year by year, to all through the decade, from now to 2030, uh, we can make sure that uh, with member states together, we can uh, together work for a better implementation of the different pillars of this uh, declaration, which includes a human-centered digital environment, inclusiveness, security, freedom of choice. So again, the work of this CSA is, is really uh, a work that will help policymakers to make uh, the digital decade's principle of values uh, a reality. So we expect this work to uh, be very efficient and to be very practical uh, in the delivery that uh, it could lead to in the uh, near future. So with this, I think I have uh, completed my five minutes uh, and I'm happy to uh, answer any uh, questions uh, following this. Thank you very much, Eric, for this indeed quick presentation, but uh, comprehensive. And we now have indeed some minutes left for questions. By a slide as usual. There are no questions yet, but we can afford still. One. Maybe I can, I can add then if, if yes. I have two minutes, um, I can add that um, in the uh, digital decade, um, one very, very important element is that we are going to produce uh, annually a report that will be taking stock for Europe transformation every June. So every June we are going to uh, provide our constituency stakeholders a view on where we are. Uh, in this um, uh, digital decade, both on the reaching uh, the targets that I've mentioned, so in digital skills, on uh, digital transformation, but also on the values and on the respect of uh, our ethical approach of uh, a human-centered digital environment. And this uh, report will be critical, and, and this CSA will have the possibility and the opportunity to really drive and to nourish and feed uh, the preparation of the report, maybe not this year, but the year in, 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 the, in 2024, at a very wide time when we are going to be close to the middle of the decade uh, to take stock on where we are and where uh, problems are and where solutions also are, are, are going tonight. So take that in mind uh, if you are interested to participate in that uh, uh, program. Indeed, very, very useful tip advice for all those uh, potential applicants interested in, in participating in submitting proposals to this topic. We have no questions, so I think that means you were very, very clear. Eric, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Likewise. Um, we move to the last um, topic uh, of this morning's session. Uh, it will be presented by Ralph Dam. He works at the Media Convergence and Social Media Unit at DigiConnect. Ralph, floor is yours. He's part of a, of a larger program um, that is Sorry, called... Ralph, I think we, we missed your first, uh, your first words. If you can start over again, please. Oh, okay, great. So uh, this is uh, topic 82. Uh, which is part of a, of a program that we have in, in DG Connect, which is called STARTS, Science, Technology and the Arts. Uh, in many ways, you might see this as a bit complementary to what Eric presented. So the idea of STARTS is to induce already during the innovation cycles, during research and development, this idea of 
human compatibility and ecological consciousness of of technology and to do so by including artists in these uh, research and innovation cycles. Um, so art is a key driver, driver of art driven innovation. We have been running uh, starts roughly speaking since 2016 and this specific topic is supposed to continue uh, uh, key elements of starts over the next three years. So there's three key elements and all of them should be targeted by this uh, topic. The first is starts residences. Uh, starts residences in essence is FSTP, uh, financial support to third party funding of artists willing to work with engineers in technology institutions. So artists typically would get a, a stipend, a grant of 40,000 euros and they work for six to 12 months with uh, engineers in uh, in technological institutions. Um, the topics are in the area of human compatible and ecologically conscious. Uh, uh, so we have, for example, uh, applications, of course, AI is a big topic and artists have contributed already a lot to making AI more explainable, more understandable, more willing to accept human preferences. There is we had a couple of residences already working with high performance computing centers, uh, for example, in music. Uh, then there is a whole uh, program that we have, which is digital innovation hubs. And in some of these digital innovation hubs, we have already art residences. Uh, the artists, so to speak, is a missing link between digital and uh, the local economy. Um, then we have, of course, in the spirit of the new European Bauhaus as a topic, art driven. Uh, use of technology to facilitate the green transition and and finally we have um in in the area of social media and internet uh, uh, the idea that artists could help in mitigating the issues of misinformation and disinformation uh, helping uh, uh, users better understand uh, the issue and and react to it so this is starts residences the topics are open. This is just examples, but they should give a, a, a feeling of what we expect. Then the second pillar of this um, of this um, upcoming project is starts prizes. We have been uh, awarding starts prizes since 2016, and this project is supposed to continue uh, from 2024 to 2026. Uh, three more years of starts prizes. Starts prizes are awards to artists who have already shown interesting work at the nexus of technology and the arts. Uh, uh, this is an annual prize with two categories, each one 20,000 euros, uh, and. Uh, it has proven very interesting and it has shown that there's already a lot of work going on where art and technology collaborate on, on this idea of art-driven innovation. Then the third pillar will be uh, something we have had a pilot case for uh, in the last two years, namely uh, AI and Music Festival. Here the idea is to use musicians as a specific case study of how AI and humans interact in the area of creativity. So, so, so music as a way to see what is the best way for AI to support us and help us in our strive for creativity. And, and this goes beyond music, of course, and, and music is in this case just, a, a, um, as I said, a case study, a, a, an example where we can try to understand better this, this, this aspect of AI. Um, as I said, the starts residences and the starts prices are uh, financial support to third party uh, as, as a financial mechanism. We expect, roughly speaking, 10 to 15 starts residences to be financed, each one 40,000 euros via this project. And then we have the starts price for um, uh, each year, two prices of, of, uh, of 20,000 euros for three years. So the indicative budget of this call, this is a CSA, is 3 million euros, roughly speaking, uh, divided, um, not totally equally, but roughly speaking, divided between these three activities. Um, if you want to know more about STARTS, because this is the background for this call, there is a, a website called starts.eu where you can find details. I guess I stop here, thanks. Thank you very much, Ralph.
we will now open the floor for questions via Slido. We have still a few minutes, so let's let's see. If there are questions from the audience. Yes. So there is a question on how does this call, this topic, differ from the call Horizon uh, Cluster 4 2023 Human CO133, which I believe will be tackled this afternoon. We are talking about the topic fostering knowledge valorization through societal and cultural iterations. It's also a CSA. I don't know if you can comment on this, Ralph. I have to admit I don't uh, uh, I don't know this call, but uh, it is clear that uh, from the title it seems it's more towards the cultural sector, right? Something I didn't say perhaps very clearly enough is this call is not targeting uh, cultural and creative industries. It's targeting creativity in industry, in all of industry. So over the years, uh, Starts has been involved with automotive industry, with telecom industry, uh, and, and not exclusively, actually not at all, with creative industry. Creative industry is more on the, on the art side here as a means to help other sectors to achieve their goals in terms of, of innovation. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ralph. I think also it will be helpful in the presentation in the afternoon uh to 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 wait and see uh, what's what's presented in that topic and that will probably also help to 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 throw some uh, some clarity on the differences uh, the next question i will assume that this topic will be targeted to existing SARS consortium well there is of course an ongoing project for for um, for the starts prize in particular but there's also other projects with a variety of partners um, certainly, uh, uh, the Starts Prize has been uh, um, awarded uh, by one uh, entity for the last the four years, uh, and uh, I'm sure this entity will also continue to will also try to to uh, um, to submit here. But uh, uh, while there is certainly a reason to to think of continuity there's also a reason to think of change right so i i, I think uh, if there is a convincing proposal that adds additional elements to the way the starts price is organized uh then then this is certainly of interest yes, I, mean, I think here the main the main uh, point here is the starts price for starts residences we have a couple of different projects with a wide variety of consortia and, and i guess there has been a a steady rollover and and AI and music is is strictly speaking a new part of Horizon Europe program. Yes, I believe here it's important to to stress that this is a, this is not a this is not a call uh, a topic to identified beneficiaries. This is an open call for proposals. This topic it means that um, well it's an open an open competition for all proposals and uh, and what matters is you no know, addressing what's what's in the topic as as, as Ralph described um that's a difference between a, a, an open call for proposals and, a, and an invitation for a specific beneficiary to to apply where there is no no open competitions um i think there are no further questions on 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 this topic uh, so thank you very much ralph for your presentation and clarifications um i learned that there were Two more questions about the topics on the metaverse. Unfortunately, uh, I do not. I think we do not have uh, here with us uh, Adelina anymore. Uh, so I would suggest that the, the, um, those uh, viewers who submitting those questions and we couldn't tackle them, that you please channel them through the Q and A in the funding and, and tenders portal. So with this, we have uh, closed the morning session, uh, but reminder that there is still an afternoon session and there are still 
several important elements to be covered there. Um, we will continue uh, with the content, uh, with topics, what is, uh, what is uh, that proposals are expected to, to tackle in, in various topics. Uh, still three objectives, three headings to be, to be presented, systemic approaches for accelerating uptake of technology and innovation, international cooperation, and uh, research and innovation for industry 5.0. And beyond the, the content, the, the theme, uh, thematic side of it, we will also have uh, a couple of sessions, uh, very interesting and very important. One on how, how to prepare proposals, moving from the what to the how to prepare the proposals. There will be a session on cross-cutting issues presented by Hadea colleagues. And uh, finally, uh, an opportunity to get uh, more information on available support, a session uh, from the NCP uh, networks. Uh, so that minutes at uh, one o'clock. So from my side, big thanks to all of you who have been following uh, the session this morning. Big thanks to all the speakers. And last but not least, big thanks to, to all those colleagues working behind the scenes. Uh, Hadea colleagues, uh, colleagues in uh, Research and Innovation uh, DG, the communication team, and to Catherine as well. So that's it from me. Enjoy your lunch. Goodbye.